Hello, sisters. Um, just gonna wait a sec till some of you come, some more of you come. I don't know if it's like the time of day or the fact that I'm in the middle of the book. Like, so with my um, there's only one of you here, but whatever. So when I was reading the Lillian Faderman book, I only started reading it on my YouTube channel um, in like the last four chapters or something. And it got like very few views. And I was like, that's understandable. Because, I mean, it's a history book, so you can kind of jump in anywhere and just start learning from that point on. But whatever. My my thought process was, well, people don't want to like listen to a book when it's like halfway through. So I thought reading essays would kind of like circumvent that because it's like you don't need to know every essay in the book to understand the essay. I thought that if I numbered the essays, it would just make it like better for people to like navigate my channel. But maybe numbering the essays makes people feel like they need to have listened to the previous essays to show up. I don't know. Anyway. Mm. Today's non-sponsor is Wendy's. Okay. So I was on the way home from work and I went to Wendy's. And like an idiot, I ordered Coke. And I forgot that Wendy's has those stupid fucking machines that have like 150 flavors of pop. So their Coke tastes like shit. It's not even carbonated properly. Like, I can't believe I spent money on that. Someone should sue Coke over this. Okay. So. Um, first of all, that was nice and short, wasn't it? Um, I didn't feel like a long haul. Like, I mean, none of the essays in this book have been that long so far. But I just thought that since I've already worked eight hours today and everything, I'd be tired. But it wasn't bad. I actually am thinking I might even do the next essay right away and then just do a different essay at the same time tomorrow. Like... You know what I mean? I don't know. Um, also, Momo is here. Momo, say hi to the people. Say hi. Hi. No, you're supposed to like move your paw. Okay, fine. Well, okay. So, basically, this essay is about male chauvinism, but you could almost, in a way, she's almost kind of addressing like an aspect of toxic masculinity. Um. But so the beginning of this essay, I don't know if when I read it, if it was clear, but the first two pages at the end of the page, it says summer 1982. So I think she's saying she wrote the first two pages of the essay in summer 1982 um, because she says in the preface that a lot of this stuff is kind of been percolating since the 70s or it's based on like stuff that she was teaching in over the last like from the 70s. So, OK, so I actually, first of all. I don't think I've ever come across the term male chauvinist in a radical feminist context. Like, because it's outdated and most of my radical feminist stuff is, like, contemporary women, right? Um, so I liked that, first of all. Um, let's go through. This is not a very long essay. It's only 10 pages. So let's go through this, like, quite in a quite detailed way. So she talks about how it all these women... Oh, hello, Uta. It's all these women trying to find the language to describe something that they don't have the language for. This reminded me of um, Dworkin. I think it's in one of the first chapters of Pornography by Dworkin. She talks about something else that's also mentioned. And she says at the beginning of this book that Dworkin is one of her um, influencers. So, But it, talk, it reminds me of the problem of naming or the power of naming. I don't remember exactly the terminology that Dworkin uses. But basically, she talks about how when men acknowledge something is there when men give something a name men are willing it into reality and it's through this power that they have the power to deny the experiences and of women and like you know the existence of things that women like phenomena that women experience and understand because the men are not like blessing it with their power of naming things um so this is reminded me of this section because she's talking about how, like, you know, through many generations, women have been pointing, oh, look, there's a problem over there. And, you know, because the language hasn't been blessed by men, it hasn't been, like, passed on to women to have the power of naming the problem. Um, yeah, I just found that very interesting. Um, yeah, okay, let's keep going.
So then she she decides that she's going to use the words phallism and phallist to describe um, the phenomenon of conceptualizing of males as persons to the point that you have excluded females as persons from being a conceptual category. That's basically how I understood what she's saying. I don't know if you understood it differently than that. Um, that's basically what I think she's positing in the essay. And yeah, she uses the word phallism and phallus, but like, this is amazing to me. Amazing. Because, okay, I made up the words phallism and phallus for this context, and the beast is it belongs to. But the novelty and strangeness of the term bothers me. Okay, whatever. She says, I might almost want to use the term manism and man for the complex and the beast. That would actually be fine as long as I could count on people's understanding that one can't invariably tell. Yeah, okay. That like what she's talking about. Anyway. Um, wait, one can't invariably tell just by looking who the men are and get most of the folks who look like men are men and most of those who don't aren't. Okay. So she has ironically, unironically made the not all men argument here. Well, to do with male chauvinism. I'm just going to use that term because I think people know what I'm talking. It, it's just to, to be specific. Okay. So she's being like, you know, most men are phallists, but you can't tell by looking at a man if he's a phallist or if he's just a man. But most men are phallists, and most non-men are not phallists. I also don't agree with that. Most of those who don't aren't. Because what she is describing here, you know, the taking all of your conceptual space of personhood being, like, dominated by males, I don't think that's a female, I don't think that's a male-specific issue, right? Um, like, she talks about how it's the di there's a difference between treating someone as a human being and treating them with respect, right? And when she was talking about that, like, obviously all her examples are about men, and I'm all on top of that, and that's good. But, um, obviously, the things that she's describing, women can also be perpetrators of that, right? Are they the source of the problem? No. But they can internalize and enact the phallism that she's describing. Hello, VF. Yes, all men, exactly. Um, yeah, so again, I'm not quite, I really, I have, I wish I could talk to her. I, I fucking need to go to Michigan. I don't know if she's still around, if she'd want to talk to me. Like, I know she's around, but I don't know if she'd want to talk to some random lady from the internet. But I wonder if it's a period of her, a, a product of her time. I wonder if from her position, saying not all men was like strategic because then it let women, um, who didn't necessarily because she's like essentially a radical feminist lesbian separatist right so i think perhaps i don't know perhaps she has put the not all men argument there so that if you are a woman who feels insecure about your heterosexuality or your male partner or whatever that because there's one phrase in the essay that says not all men you don't need to take it personally and apply it to your life you can still um you can still absorb the um concepts and think for yourself without like your emotions getting in the way i wonder if it's like tactical um vf says to sell more books i don't know vf though i don't think that was marilyn fry ever like really making bank off of her books like is she really famous because even most radical feminists i talk to don't know who she is so i doubt i doubt that i don't like i don't think she was prolific like andrea dorkin or anything the kitty looks comfy yeah i know i cranked up my heat like half an hour ago um, and there she is. Whenever I crank up my heat, which is there, you can see the baseboard. Eh, there. Uh, she comes and flops down. Mama. 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 Any examples, little stories? You mean examples are little stories of, like, women perpetuating like the phallism that she's talking about i can't think of anything off the top of my head but let's keep going and maybe i'll think of something look at the cat's like yeah she i don't know when she's relaxed in my bedroom she does this and her tail completely flops down 
Um, oh, does Fry give stories? Yeah, there's some little stories in here. So I'm going to go through them. Um, about getting editors. Actually, okay, before I keep going through this essay, crossingpress.com. I, I didn't realize till like the other day, but the last page of the book is from like the publishing, I think, publisher house. And I want to see, do they still exist? Well, they must. Oh my god. The domain is for sale. Okay, the website is not here. Well, okay, it would require more um, research, but I have a sense that this is from Crossing Press Berkeley 10speed.com. I don't know. I have a sense that this is from like a radical feminist publisher. There's quite a fuck ton back in the day but like almost all of them have fallen there's only a handful of radical feminist publishers left and i don't think the the ones that exist i don't think most of them are like old i think they're like kind of in the last two or three decades that they popped so i don't know but yeah um maybe she had nigels maybe okay let's keep going <clears throat> uh yeah so the man is so to me, this also, when she refers like to male chauvinism and she says the, you're, the term I'm going to use is phallism, but really the term I'd like to use is man and manism, but we for communication, that's not clear. Um, and to me, this was like all the times that people are like, rad femmes hate men, you're man hating feminine, me, like all that crap. Um, it's like. But literally, when we look at the world and interpret what we're seeing, interpret our experiences, interpret the experiences of our sisters, what we end up with is that men are a huge fucking problem. And for us to just point and say, yes, men are a problem, that these things the men are doing are a problem, like, that should be fine. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Okay. Um... I also found it very interesting. Um, heavily retired says I just object to being talking talked down to. Do you think that she is talking down to you or I'm talking down to you? Matt Adams says that's always my answer. Why wouldn't I hate them? LOL. Yeah. Um, so I also need to read The Feminine Mystique because I know it's like a hugely influential text. Um in, like, the general feminist women's liberation movement in history. Um, and that, obviously, Bred Betty Friedan is, like, influential and historically significant. But I have named, I've titled this essay, The Problem That Has No Name, in deliberate reversal of Betty Friedan's use of the phrase of the title of the introductory chapter of The Feminine Mystique. The book locates the problem in women. Oh, talk down to by the men, Uta says. Yeah, that makes so much more sense. I don't know why I didn't assume you were saying that. <laughs> yeah. Um... So, yeah, I just found that, I don't know, I liked that, that she was referencing something historically significant, and also, like, as a lesbian, talking about this, like, overtly lesbophobic woman, um, and how she saw the problem in women, and, and, and the author of this, the lesbian, is seeing the problem in the men, I don't know, I just, it felt demonstrative of something to me, okay. Mama. Do you know that the people are looking at you? Is that why you're like facing the camera now? Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so the first section. Oh, so many interesting things in this essay. So feminists have always been sensitive to the conflation of the concepts man and male. People tend and are explicitly taught to think that distinctly human characteristics are human. Okay, so I think when she uses man and male in this sense, she means man is in human and male. And this is what I was saying. So the people, when they envisage what is humanity, what is personhood, automatically the first thing that comes to mind is a male, a male person, right? Um, and that women are kind of like a spin-off TV show of that. <laughs> like, we're the beta version. Or that women are kind of like the, I don't know, the subclass. With, yeah, the subclass within that, right? 
So, oh, Aquarina is here. Hello, Aqua. Um, Happily Retired says, how about male capture for chauvinism, which isn't always referred to, um, always referring to men. That's a good cons um, term. I like that. Thank you. Um, as you might have noticed, I've already switched terms like 7,000 times in the last 15 minutes, so it's not going to be consistent, but whatever. I like that term. Okay. Male capture. I really like that. We have different linguistics and mindsets. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Yeah, then she talks about how humans are arrogant and think we're better than other species. I actually thought that she might, like, spin off into some kind of, like, eco-feminist, vegan feminist paragraph or some or phrase or something. She didn't. But I could see it was definitely going in that direction. Um... So in this section, which is Ala, um, sorry, Uta, what you were talking about, like with men talking down to you and like male chauvinism and male capture and all that, um, she talks about how, let's let me find the spot here. Being the highest animal, the crowning achievement of evolution, we feel it is morally acceptable, even laudable, to treat members of other species with contempt, condescension, and patronage. We supervise their safety, we decide what is best for them, we cultivate and train them to serve our needs and please us, we, ar we arrange what they shall be fed and sheltered, um, that they should be fed and sheltered as we please and shall breed and have offspring at our convenience, and often our concern for their welfare is sincere and our affection genuine. So, so she refers to that as humanism, like the concept that humans are superior, okay? Then here, this, this paragraph here, phallism is a form of humanism. It is an assumption of superiority with accompanying rights and duties that is seen as not requiring justification by personal virtue or individual merit and is taken to justify a contemptuous or, contemptuous or patronizing attitude towards certain others. The phallist, confusing man and man, like capital and then lowercase, <clears throat> as in human and man, Meets women with humanist contempt and patronage. So basically all the things that she just applied to like how humans think of animals. She's like, that's how men think of women. They need to be sheltered. They need to be guided. They need to be protected. Like basically that men infantilize us to the point of being like a subcategory of humans. They infantilize us to the point of removing our personhood. Like I think the modern way of saying that would be to like that like men deny women their agency um but i like her more explicit philosophical way of explaining the situation uta says men tend to think they are better because they might do heavy work faster um then they pull out their backs <laughs> yeah yeah Kamatashi says, haha, Benji, are you against ecofeminism or dot dot dot? No, I, um, it's actually one of, so like I've said before, I want to focus kind of on generally like radical feminist stuff, which I think this is more radical feminist than lesbian. I think there's some lesbian stuff, like maybe two essays at the end. Um, and then I want to move definitely into womanism or after radical feminism, then lesbian feminism, then womanism. And then after womanism, I mean, we'll see how much steam I have left for books to read on my channel. But I would be down to read some eco-feminist um, theory. Um, also, I have never thought about it before, but is there like foundational texts for Marxist feminists or Marxist Leninist feminists or whatever? Like, or are, is that just like a Tumblr identity that's popped up? Um, or like socialist feminists? Like, are all of these just like identities within feminism that are being used recently? Um, or... Anyway, whatever. Okay. <laughs> VF says... <laughs> VF says, We have machines to do the heavy lifting now and women are better at running them. So true. Aquamarine, are you telling me to go to study women's study at university? Oh, at Benji. Women's studies at Benji University. That's funny. Uta says she wants to do live stream. I want to do live stream. Um, I will email you. The problem is that I am like an extremely fucking busy person. <laughs> um, so I kind of was like waiting to answer you until I could give you like more than one potential time <laughs> to do it. Um, I will answer you 100% today, Uta. I am so sorry. I didn't mean to like, I'm just really bad with emails. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
I love how you guys are like, Benji University, I didn't even finish my undergrad. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So the whole first section is basically her exp explaining how, like, as humans are to animals is as male chauvinists or male captured men are to women. Okay. So that is the first section of the essay. Let's see how she concludes this. Oh, there was a there wasn't there one example here. So then she has a section here. Sorry, still in the I haven't moved on to the second section. Um where she talks about how an irrigation of rights and duties fully anomalous to humanism is carried out also in relation to infants, the ill, um, the aged, those labeled insane or criminal, and by members of dominant races in relation to members of subordinate races. It turns out that in the eyes of any particular human creature, only certain of the other beings that are human versus canine, etc., are taken to be participants in species superiority. Others are taken to be something less, and because they are because they are defective or underdeveloped, or members of some other non-fully human species. Um, so she's basically talking about how the same way that men dehumanize women is the same way that other classes dehumanize other classes. And so basically, I think she's kind of... Um, this is kind of a distilled... This, this paragraph is kind of a distilled version of the entire oppression essay, in my opinion. Anyway. Oh, now you guys are talking about that dude. Okay. I don't think, like, what he said was fetishy about me, obviously. But I think that he was just trolling and knew that would get radfems and, like, knickers in a twist. So he specifically trolls that just because, like, as a, as a way of trolling. I'm not saying it's okay. But I think that more than a fetishist, he is primarily a troll who happened to fetishize me. That's what I'm saying. Um, that she needs a mod. Yeah. Um, I'm actually... I was wondering, like, should we... Should someone email Karen? And be, like... Maybe I could do this, for example. Email Karen and be like, can you add me as a moderator in the settings of your YouTube channel? And that way, if I show up when you're live streaming, I have the power to get rid of trolls, at least. Um... Aqua Marina, why are you using your data? Don't you have Wi-Fi? Aqua Marina says, funny story, y'all watching. Benji, you has used up 96% of my data this month. Danger. Yeah, danger. I would be anxious. That is, when does your billing cycle restart? <laughs> Mark says, feminism has been around a long time, says Dragon. Okay, cool, but I need to, like, find out this. Actually, I'm not going to find out now. I mean, I my book list is, like, 40 books long just for lesbian and rad femme stuff. So, it's not. we're not in a hurry. You're anxious? Do we need to, like, give you money to buy more internet? <laughs> um, Persephonia says, Hey, I just got here. What's male capture? So it's basically this this problem that has no name chapter is basically about, um, like, psychological phallocentrism of giving personhood to men and then seeing women as, like, some kind of subcategory that doesn't have its own personhood. Um, and so she talks about how men do this and how men perpetuate this, um, like keeping maleness in the forefront of who they respect, right? And that people without maleness are therefore excluded from being respected. But I would stipulate or postulate that, you know, women do the same shit. Anyway, new billing is in two days and running on fumes. Okay, well, that's at least something. Uta says, I have a feeling that Karen likes the troll to let the trolls in so we can pile on. True enough. Okay. Yeah. Kamutashio, I don't know which feed it is that you're talking. Oh, the thing with the person fetishizing me. That was on Karen and Exolantic's live stream. Like, was that the night before last night? I think it was on Wednesday night. Um,
VF says, yeah, I know Karen likes taking them on, but it's lesbians that get trolling abuse from these creeps. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like, with my own channel, really the most concerning stuff that I get is comments, not, um, not stuff that you would see in the live chats. And I leave, like, almost all of it up unless they're at, like, specifically targeting someone or specifically calling for violence. And, um... I don't know. I go back and forth on it because I'm like they're being like overtly lesbophobic and misogynist, but then I'm like that's like people should see that they're lesbophobic misogynist then, right? I don't know. So I don't know. I get what you're saying, VF, but I'm not really sure what Karen's mentality is on like why and how she's doing this. Um Oh, thanks, all Carmina. Okay. No, I have, like, a general foundational understanding of Marxist feminism. I'm just saying, like, is there, like, an entire, like, body of literature for Marxist feminists? Or are they just kind of, like, rad femmes who, like, con whose praxis is Marxist, like, very, very, like, traditionally Marxist? Um, Komutashio, please send me this article from Autostraddle. Maybe I'll do a Benji soapbox about it. Okay. Anyway, let's keep moving on. So. So the second section of the essay is about how, so the phallist, aka the person who is male captured or the male chauvinist, whatever, um, does not treat women as persons. And it's questioning, you know, is this like intentional or a product basically of like, the social environment. Um, so then she talks about how there are certain behaviors or abilities that one has which qualifies them as a person or not a person. So then she uses the um, example of illness, saying, you know, once, once a person has lost certain abilities because they're so severely ill, it's generally people don't consider them full persons in their mind um there's some more examples here specific examples i'm just going to read this whole um two paragraphs so given this general picture one can easily see that the possibilities for failing to attribute personhood to persons are plentiful um what she means is that there's like many different reasons why it's not like one reason why somebody would stop giving personhood or seeing someone as a full person um <clears throat> one one can observe a creature that is in fact quote unquote person behaving and come away simply not believing or not knowing that the behavior took place. For example, a waitress may anticipate one's readiness for coffee and bring the uh, bring the coffee all in full view, and one may not know that a very person-ish person performance um, has just gone on here. So basically, the invisibility of women, that women's labor is like, she also brings up secretarial work quite a bunch. And I guess it's because, you know, the product of her time. Um, not that it's not an issue anymore. I just mean, like, it was, like, a very um, symbolic at the time. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> she talks about... Um, yeah, so... If a woman is doing what a woman is supposed to be doing, that men take for granted, basically that's how I'm, like, understanding this specific example then there's no reason to view that as, like, an action or an ability which qualifies her to be a person. Because it's like a robot just doing what a robot is supposed to do. That's not... That doesn't make them a human, right? Like, I like from the chauvinist perspective. Um, uh, okay. Um, Uta says, also Hollywood boosts men's dismissal of us with bimbo actress images, excessive maleness in films, etc. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, it's it's everywhere. That's why, like, when she points that and she says it's, like, it's specifically those men, I'm like, it's not really specifically one group of men. It's kind of, like, fucking everywhere. I agree. Okay. Um, okay, so that's the first example. Second example. One can observe certain behavior and take it as a manifestation of a lower degree or smaller range of abilities and concerns 
then it in fact manifests. The performances of secretaries, for instance, are often subject to this sort of misjudgment. So basically being like, oh, you can do that, but that's so easy. Anybody could do that. Like, does that even count as being like, you've actually done something worthwhile? Because like a monkey could do like that kind of thing. I think that's kind of what she's saying here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's like an invisibility of women because their labor is taken for granted. And it's not even as female specific labor. It's the fact that women are supposed to do this labor, I think, that makes them invisible. Um, Yeah, Uta brings up James Bond as a perfect example. I think he's a really good example of um, male chauvinism. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, it really is seen as, like, the person. Like, not even to do with, like, writing, right? It, it really seems like, of the characters in any James Bond movie, who has, like, the most humanity and emotional depth, and, like, who is the character most empathetic, and caring and like worried about is James Bond. All the women are accessories. They're like literal object accessories. Um, so yeah, I think that's a great example, Uta. Persephonia, you can email me um, gncentric one word at gmail.com. Persephonia, are you in Eastern Europe somewhere? Ninochka Roska. What is that? I don't know what that is, but not Ninochka sounds Russian to me. Uta says those. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> VF says women are just sex lamps in those movies. It's talking about James Bond movies. Um, uh, Uta says that her. I mean, I grew up watching a lot of really misogynistic stuff. I watched, um, like, Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee movies, which are, like, not specifically misogynistic, but obviously, like, inherently misogynistic. Um, James Bond. I watched a lot of J classic James Bond, classic Elvis, um, Dukes of Hazard, which is also very racist. I don't know. It all kind of blended together. <laughs> And it's, like, it's really crazy to me because, like, my parents wouldn't let me watch, like, anything with magic in it. Like, even Barney. Um, and I wasn't allowed to watch Disney when I was little. And I wasn't allowed to, like, read Harry Potter or anything. But then I was allowed to, like, consume this overtly misogynistic stuff. Ooh, Lisa Michelle's here. Hello, Lisa. Lisa says she grew up on James Bond. <gasps> Komutashio, yes, Debs. Okay, for any of you who don't know, there's this show, I mean, this movie. It's very, like, um... Not not Spy Kids. What was the name of that guy who was like in Malcolm in the Middle who had his own like movie series where he was a spy? It was like the spy next door or something. Like it's like very like you know those like early 2000s spy movies where the spy is like a teenager in school and it's like literally impossible that their classmates haven't caught on, but it's like that's the movie. It's like that, but it's like a group of four lesbians. There was also like a British TV show. I forget what it was called. There was this British TV show I used to watch that was, like, a group of kids in a high school who were, like, spies, and they, like, conduct spy things, like, in the school, and it's, like, anyway, Debs is like that, but all, like, all women, and then the main character is a lesbian, and then the main villain is a lesbian, and I don't want to spoil it, but it's, like, very feel-good, very, like, low emotional investment, just everybody should go watch Debs. It is, like great lesbian movie you don't need to be worried that someone is going to get murdered or that they're going to get married off to a straight and you're going to be crying at the end that doesn't happen <laughs> go watch Debs it's very funny and it's like an hour and a half on Netflix okay um hello Kiara um Hannah saying what happened nothing specific then we got Charlie's Angels yeah okay Veronica Mars yes Gigi Veronica Mars also let us name other Shows that we grew up watching that are like an antidote to male chauvinism. I was about to say Buffy, but you know what? Xander is in that and he's like the original nice guy. So fuck him. Um, Xena. 
Veronica Mars. What are the other like female led TV shows that I loved when I was younger? Oh my god, did you guys ever watch what was that show called? It was like this Australian show about mermaids, H2O. Did you guys ever watch? <laughs> But that was also like very like scrot obsessed show. Kiara said Z Debs is a good movie. Haven't seen it in a while. Whereas Carmen Santiago says Uta. Lisa says Buffy was my thing. <laughs> Sophomore year of high school. Um. <clears throat> oh Daria, yes, that is a good female focused show. Your sister watched HTO, HTO. It was literally just like some Australian show. It was like pretty low budget. Like the special effects and script and everything was like really shit, honestly. And then it was like they're mermaids. <laughs> like when they get wet, they turn into mermaids. And it's like, so you can't wash your, like, how do you wash your hands without turning into a mermaid? Anyway, whatever. Um, Harold and Maude. I don't know what that is. Howard Strauss. OMG, y'all are talking about Pretty Little Liars. So I'm like, as I have mentioned before, I was like an actual fucking nerd in high school. And so I read the Pretty Little Liars book. I'd also did this with Twilight to my dismay. So what I would do is I only had like so much allowance. I think I got like five dollars a week or something like that like it wasn't my allowance was like it wasn't nothing but it wasn't like enough to be like going out buying books all the time and this is before i had like the means and ability to pirate books so i literally would go to chapters it's like barnes and noble in canada and i would like buy the twilight books and buy the pretty little liars books and so i would have like the whole series i read the twilight books so many times that i got faster at reading them like you know, you can watch, like, a show in double speed if you've watched it before, you know? And at one point, I was, like, bragging to people in the seventh grade that I read all four Twilight books in seven days. And now I'm, like, anyway. But I've reread Pretty Little Liars so many times. Um, and, yes, VF says the ending was lame. I agree the ending was lame. I couldn't. I was so fucking pissed off. I was, like, I have been religiously reading these books for, like, two years. And this is the ending you give me? I didn't even watch the show. I watched the show for like one season and I was fucking pissed off because they obviously destroyed the fucking books. Anyway. Harold and Maude was um hilarious. Haley Mills Pollyanna, what's that? Well, I'm dumping it in Google to check out later. Killing all of Emily's girlfriends. Mm. You know what show is actually like so female centric? Unexpectedly amazing? Is She-Ra. Like, I know there's one NB character in the show. But honestly, that female character, that character is like barely around. Is only mentioned a handful of times. I don't know. I just, it, like, I understood that this character was non-binary and it was, like, a thing. But, honestly, it's, like, very easy to overlook. Um, I just really liked how in that show there were so many times where I would be like, oh my god, I haven't seen a man on the screen? Like, the whole episode. Or, like, oh my god, they've been discussing stuff with each other for, like, 20 minutes. Just about women. They haven't even mentioned men. Or, like, who has a crush on a man or like who's the king like nothing it's all just like so female centric and like um anyway yeah but vf that's like a kind of chicken and egg situation uh vf says she likes the old school she ra she doesn't like the new she ra who looks like a troon i think that's just because like it's it's not like it's just because that's like saying that the new live My Little Pony looks like a brony. And it's like because the bronies made My Little Pony their thing. Yeah, anyway, whatever. Uta says, what do you think about um, Jane Austen? Um, Honestly, I've tried because I was really into like romantic. Probably the most, the most comparable author I've read to Jane Austen is like Georgette Hare, 
and I read her stuff like nuts. I actually was friends with this girl, Akua, um, in high school, and we would, like, each take out different Georgia hair from the library or, like, buy it and, like, trade it with each other because we both loved her. Um, hello, Yogi. Um, anyway, I tried to read Georgia hair, and to me, honestly, it felt so, like, dense. Like, I don't have an issue with that type of language or that time period or whatever, but it just felt to me like, you know, in Lord of the Rings, I don't know if any of you have read Lord of the Rings, you know, in Lord of the Rings, there's so many times where you're like, why does he need to spend like seven pages explaining the politics of this region or whatever? Like, that is the sense I had when trying to read Jane Austen. And I probably should try and read her again, because you know, like famous female author and whatever, but I just found it like very cumbersome, basically. Anyway. Okay. Yogi says, I have read them and Jane Austen, and I agree completely. Thank you. I've read quite a lot of books. I'm pretty confident on my take about books. Um, yeah, Hannah, Hannah says, um, Jane Austen wrote some strong female characters in a time when the only thing women can do to survive was marry or look after your brother, father, sister, family. No, exactly. So I understand how they're, like, important, which is why I'm like, I should read them. Maybe I'll do an audiobook. There's probably tons of fucking audiobooks of Jane Austen. Okay, fuck. Let's keep going with the essay. Then we can discuss other random bullshit. All right. Oh, great. Okay, the, the, okay. So talk about the secretary. Um, and then the third example. Three. One of my observ- what? Okay, wait. Let me have a drink of my shitty Coke. And then I'll start that again. Okay. <clears throat> One may observe circumstances that are adverse to the manifestation of relevant abilities, judge these circumstances to have been optimal, and then conclude that from the non-appearance of the abilities in these quote-unquote optimal circumstances that they are not present. Black children in white schools and women of any race in university classrooms are routinely subjected to this sort of treatment. Um, this, to me, I don't know if it's like a perfect analogy, but when she said that, it literally reminded me of Jermaine's Greer, like, oh no, that's not the right thing. Who is that quote from? There's some kind of a quote where it's like, if you ask a fish to climb a tree and it fails to climb the tree, it doesn't mean the fish isn't stupid. It's because you asked to do something it can't do. Something along those lines. That's kind of what it reminds me of here. So it's like, yeah, you drop one black kid in a white school. I can't remember her name. The, that girl from um, was it Alabama in the U.S. in the 50s. Um. And then, you know, because of their environment, it's very hard for them to do well. And then you're like, see, look, they're stupid. It's like, well, you put them in the worst possible situation. Data you were looking for in that situation. It's not. Okay. I have no doubt that people who avoid perceiving women as persons do all of these sorts of things singly and in combination. But another more vicious device is at hand. It is not a matter of simple misrepresentation of presented data, but a matter of rigging the data and then taking it at face value. So basically, it's like gerrymandering. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my god, really, Hannah? Also, Hannah, how do you know all this stuff? Um, Hannah says, Georgette Hare is an author who wrote certain tropes to pay her husband's tuition fees and then their taxes. I know that she wrote a lot of the same tropes, but as a teenager, when I was into those tropes, I liked having one author whose writing voice I enjoyed who just wrote a bunch of shit on that trope. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Aquamarina in all caps. Like I forgot to smash the like button. <laughs> I also like how everybody in lives is always like smash the like button. They're never like press the, the like button or click. They're like smash the like button. Um, Hannah says, Jermaine Greer boffed John Peel and various other Brits. Another fine. After finding that out, I'm still undecided on her as a person. What does boffed mean? She hooked up with them. She like screwed them, had sex with them. 
Ocarina says, I love to yell, I get excited. You, we are in the same boat, man. Like, why do you think I'm on YouTube? <laughs> because my roommates are like, stop telling us about this stuff. <laughs> It's just YouTube talk. Yeah, I know. Okay, well, something, somebody, oh, also, hello, Toss Downs. Um, oh, yeah, Hannah says that, um, <clears throat> Hannah says that, um, yes, Georgette Hare, I think Georgette Hare is the first murder mystery author that I was like, you know what? I would like to read many of her books. Like, I never got also agatha kirstie a lot of the like classic female authors i just i tried to read one of their books and couldn't get into it and like everybody's raving all the time about agatha kirstie so i assume you know probably good i just need to get into it but yeah anyway um yeah i don't know much about jermaine greer to be honest with you like i think I've watched some documentaries about, like, the women's movement in America or some shit where she was in it and stuff like that. Or, no, I think I watched a documentary that was, like, a history of the photo with her and Angela Davis. Um, fuck, was that Angela? It was Angela Davis, right? Fuck. Exactly, Lisa. Lisa's, like, don't waste time on books you don't connect with. Exactly. I have, like, many, many books. Um... Speaking of that, would you guys be interested for me to just read lesbian fiction? Like, not things that are readily accessible. Things that are kind of hard to get your hands on? Mm. <laughs> Aqua Marina, what is that? <laughs> Aqua Marina says, look how beautiful Benji's hands are. Could be models in marble. Um, Gorge, thank, thank you, Aqua Marina. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know much about her, but what I do know is that she's straight. So, you know, temper your expectation. Okay. No offense to straight women. I'm just saying, if you expect women to act in a way that prioritizes women and that the personal is political, usually lesbians live up to that expectation more than straight women when it comes to, like, the feminist movement. Like, although there's all those poly leses who went off to be with men, so fucking knows. Okay. So the three examples of, in this section, um, yeah. Okay. Um, let's move forward. So, what she's talking about here is, so the characteristics that qualify one, or abilities that qualify one as being more more person, having more personhood or less personhood, basically, is what she's saying. I know she talks about how, you know, are men being malicious? Or are they just, like, being born into this and observing this and, you know, like, fish to water kind of thing? And to me, it's like, first of all, I don't care what their intent is. I care about the outcome. Is their intent relevant to changing the situation? I would argue no. But either way, what I do know is that men, historically, have taken what women do, what women's abilities are. For example, like interpersonal stuff. Women are very good about like um, relationship, like in, in emotional, psychological, interpersonal information, right? So like gossiping and stuff. They have taken the things that women are... Oh, Uta's leaving. Okay. Um, bye, Uta. <laughs> Uh, I wish I lived closer to you. I'd come help you haul some trees around. Bring a chainsaw. Well, it's not my chainsaw, but I'd bring a chainsaw. Uh, okay. Right, so, the things that women are good at, child rearing, obviously, or the things that women are, like, the default person to do that, have systemically been devalued by patriarchy. So all of the things that we're good at, they're not traits that would qualify one as a person. Men have decided that the things that women are good at are traits that disqualify us from being deserving of respect. So, again, the genesis of this and the intention of this, like, originally, I don't know. Because she's saying it's like a fish-to-water kind of thing with these men. Um, which, you know, I don't think most men sit down and think about it. Um... 
But either way, I don't want to get caught up in the intentions of it. I just want to say what she's saying. That made me think of like how men have systemically disval disvalued specific the specific characteristics that women have that men don't have. And instead of saying, you know, instead of conceptualizing this as like this qualifies them for personhood, but in like a different category, they're like, no, this if a man has that quality, right, that disqualifies him in a way from a level of personhood because then having that womanly quality now puts him in the group of men to be disrespected by other men, right? Um, VF says because they are destructive. Fucking true, man. That's an example. Men are, like, very, like, destructive and chaotic and disorganized. And when women try to be constructive and organized, you know, that's dismissed. Howard says, men define women, then devalue that. They ignore things like intelligence. Yeah, exactly. That's a more concise way of saying what I'm trying to say. Also, Howard, you're a woman, right? I feel like you were here in the last stream or the stream before that. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Uta left. <laughs> Jesus, now I have the hiccups. <clears throat> do you think antacids will do anything for the hiccups <clears throat> I never tried it before but I can imagine this is going to get really old for you guys really fast <clears throat> dragons quick someone scare Benji um um you know, you don't have to leave Howard. I'm just w wondering. <clears throat> it's okay. Um, <clears throat> right, so then... She talks about a dad trying to... <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> um, I used to get hiccups a lot. They would stick around for a while. So... I don't know. She talks about a father trying to teach the daughter to play baseball. <clears throat> well, here. I'll just read the section. Okay, I'm going to read this, and if I continue to have the hiccups, we're going to ignore it. It's like if you give it attention, it'll keep going. It's like a troll. Hiccups are trolls, but like the original troll. No, I don't know. Okay. Don't say anything. Now they're going to come back. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. A simple example is that a father's attempt to teach his daughter... Sorry. A simple example is... Of a father's attempt to teach his daughter to throw a baseball. He goes through a few superficial and short-lived efforts and shortly declares failure, her failure, without ever engaging anything like the perseverance or ingenuity that he would have engaged in the training of a son. So, you know, from the father's perspective, he is like, I did this, I'll do the same with a son or a daughter. She's just a girl, so she's not good at it. But because that's his perspective, because that is the psychology that he is entering into the situation with, he is manifesting it, right? Um, but because he's a man, the fact that he manifested it is still proof that she is the one who's a fuck up. What the fuck is Sister Wives? What did you see on an episode of Sister Wives? Dragon says I end up hiccuping as a whole. That's usually what happens. I, I would, I use, people always were like, hold your breath, but like it never fucking works. I don't know why it worked today. Okay. Because of the sisterhood. We'll see. Okay. 
yeah. So, um, <clears throat> this whole second section of the essay is basically about how the whole thing is, like, rigged. Um, hello, Michelle. No, I know what Sister Wives is, but she's referencing a show. Is there, like, a show about, like, Mormons in Utah called Sister Wives? Oh. Shocking. Um... Oh, yes, Michelle, that's a great example. Michelle says, absolutely the same thing happens in education with girls learning quote-unquote masculine subjects like math. Um, have any of you guys watched um, F is for Family? The daughter, there, there's three kids in the show. So there's like a teenage boy, like a middle school boy, and then there's like an elementary school girl. She's really young. She's like the youngest one. I think she's like seven or something. Anyway, basically, in the 70s, she's into computers and she joins the computer club and all kinds of stuff. Um... And she's constantly being, like, disrespected and stuff. Like, her math teacher's really mean to her, even though that she is, like, a fucking math genius and crap like this. And there's, like, this one scene where there's, like, a Veterans Day parade or whatever. Some American shit. I don't know what you guys are Americans are always having parades about crap. Some American parade thing. Maybe it's Memorial Day. I don't fucking know. Wait, isn't that Veterans Day? I don't fucking know. Some parade, okay? And then, um... <laughs> Her computer club is going to be in the parade. And they literally make like a separate little like float to put on the back of the float. So they're like, well, all the boys can be on this float. And because you're a girl, you can sit at the back. And they're all dressed up as like scientists or whatever. And they're like, you are the secretary. That's why you have a phone. And she's literally like the smartest kid in her mouth. Anyway, it was just like very like, wow. Because even talking to like... Some of, like, I have some, like, IT people in my family, and they're not that old. Um, the people I'm talking about are under 50 years old. And when I talk to them about doing, like, computer stuff in the 90s and the 80s and stuff, like, they're men. And they're like, yeah, it was really, really bad for the women. Anyway. But it's like, you create that environment, then it's like, you can't just be like, yeah, women aren't good at it. It's like, well, you created an environment where it's, like, hostile for them to, like, e excel in that. So they're not just going to stick around there forever. Women's sports is like that, too. Um, anyway. <laughs> Hannah says, female engineer here. Four brothers, all rubbish at math. Hannah, what type of an engineer are you? Are you, like, now when I hear the term engineer, I think of, like, computers. But I didn't used to think engineers, like, necessarily computer engineers. Um. Ugh, Yogi says, old men said, say weird stuff to me at work, like I must be the secretary. Yogi, what kind of work do you do? Um, Hannah says, I worked in IT slash engineering from 1985 onward. Wow. Today I felt so old at my work. Like I was talking to some of the people I work with and they were like, yeah, I was born in like 2003 or I was like, the fuck, how old are you, man? Anyway, uh, and I'm sure that's how you feel if I tell you what year I was born. <laughs> Lisa says, I have been saying this forever. They set up a whole system designed for us to fail. Then when women fail, they blame us as individuals. Exactly. Ocarina says, lol, Benji, it gets worse. Well, tell me how it got worse. Oh, you mean the show gets worse? Okay, I'm going to keep talking about the essay. We're like more than halfway through at this point. All right. So, yeah. How the men manifest the circumstances which justify in their minds viewing women as having less personhood oh getting older and thinking people are young that gets worse yeah it makes sense um because like i recently interacted with some children and i was like you know what year were you guys born and one of them was like 2015 and i was like excuse me how can you speak you should be like an infant and then i was like oh no it's been like seven years <laughs> And I literally was like, I was like, you were born the year after I graduated high school. And they were like, what? Like, they couldn't wrap their minds around it anyway. Okay. 
I'm sure it's only, it'll be like, it'll feel like yesterday when I'm like, oh my god, you were only born in 2020? How are you even old enough to talk? Okay. Okay. Then she has a section here where she talks about how basically once you've been labeled as having no personhood, it's very, very hard to get out of that category because it's like she's like it's trying to convince someone that you're not stupid once they've decided you're stupid. Like, what is it that there's some kind of here? One cannot, for instance, manifest certain kinds of intelligence in interactions with persons who have a prior conviction of one's stupidity. One's clever pun is heard as a clumsy misuse of a word or as a non sequitur. So basically, like, perception is very powerful. So you can literally be, like, demonstrating the traits that would, in their within their mindset, qualify you for full personhood. But because they've already disqualified you from personhood, observing those traits is now... Instead of being a basis for qualifying you for personhood, it is now the basis for disqualifying you for personhood because their perception is so powerful. Um, Aqua says to me, you're a little baby peanut. Aqua, how old are you? I always assumed you were like 35 or something. I don't know why, but... Um, Hannah says, first job um, drove me to drink. Literally, second job in aviation, I had support of a lot of male managers. Oh, that's good. Um, Michelle says, exactly, Benji. I find it interesting my father, who I did better in basically his area of expertise, doesn't seem to see me as female, but he absolutely sees my sister as such. He expects my sister to wait on him. No. Oh, my God. That literally is the end of this chapter. Okay. Let's let us jump ahead. Well, not even jump ahead. I think flip the page. The power and rigidity of the phallist's refusal of ex to experience women as persons ex is exposed in a curious perceptual flip he performs when he is forced or tricked into experiencing a particular being as a person who is, in fact, female. Those of her traits that he thinks of as distinctively female, which in other situations would irresistibly draw his attention, now may go virtually unnoticed as she becomes, quote-unquote, one of the boys. So either you have personhood, in which case they have, like, deleted their perception of your femaleness in order to view you as a person. Because to them, they're mutually exclusive. And if they're seeing you as a female, then they have not, they're not, no longer seeing you as a person. Um, and this, to me, is female erasure. Because, okay, like she talks about in the second essay, sexism, right? She basically says that what sexism... If I'm understanding, this is my interpretation, obviously. Go back and listen to the essay if you think this is not what it says. My understanding of the sexism essay, basically, is that to fully respect someone, you have to respect them while taking into consideration their sex, right? So, like, in a positive way, right? Um, so, based on that, what I'm getting from this is that even this type of full respect that men give women, right, of seeing the women as full persons, well, because it, necess it necessitates the exclusion of viewing them as women, you're not actually fully respecting them because you think you're fully respecting them, but you're fully respecting them without respecting them as a part of their sex, which means um, it's kind of like, okay, for example... You have two, you're a boss of a store, and you have two employees. One's a woman, one's a man. Every other night, they close the shop together, right? Um, when the woman closes the shop at the end of the night, she says to the male boss, can you drop, walk me to my car, right? And he's like, no, well, I don't do that for the boy. Why would I do that for you? See? So. Respecting and 
protect now i feel i don't like the analogy now because i feel like it's like playing into the male chivalry thing but anyway my point is that you have to respect someone on the basis of their sex not in spite of their sex so if you're respecting someone on in spite of their and as a woman in spite of her sex you're not actually respecting her that was my point i don't know if my analogy made it more or less clear but that was what i was trying to say um Oh my gosh, Michelle. Do you have a do you still have a relationship with your father? Michelle says, agreed. To my father, I am a specter. He doesn't see me as I am. He sees me as asexual, almost un unfeeling type of doll. Um Yeah. I think that a big part of this is it's not even male perception. It's like male. Or not even conceptualization. It's kind of like the construct of what a person is. Is this vague narrative that individual men have in their heads? It's kind of. I don't know. I don't really have the words for what I'm trying to conceptualize Hannah uh, Michelle goes on very superficially we have good discussions so long as the topic is intellectual yeah exactly I'm a breathing computer mm -hmm. well I'm sorry that that's a relationship with your dad that sucks okay so Confronted with the dissonant appearance of a female person in a situation where he is unable to block out the fact that she is a person, he blocks out the fact that she is a female. Yeah, so they're mutually exclusive. Either you're a woman or you're a person. Either you deserve respect or you're a sex object. There's no in-between. Okay. Okay, now the third part. just it's so refreshing and yet at the same time kind of shocking to read this older stuff it has been assumed in the preceding section that it is obvious that women are persons otherwise failure to perceive women as persons would not have to involve all of this fooling around also i tried not to laugh at that part <laughs> just because like you know like in the type of essay where you only use one what even is that? I don't know what English grammar is. Is that like third person or something? Where you only use one and then it's like fooling around. You don't expect that to be in the same, in the same essay. Um, Michelle says, it's actually an improvement, but thank you, Benji. He went from telling me he thinks gays and lesbians should be hanged to keep us out of the gene pool. We had that at... Well, Michelle, that is... <laughs> fucking pro That's progress. Um... VF says you have to respect the differences, like making an adjustable seat, no one, not one, just made for typical males, or using male-only test dummies. Exactly. Fuck, I really need to read um, Invisible Women by Carolyn, what's her name? Carolyn Cardino Perez or something. I really need to read that, but not like, you know, on here. Kamutashi was just like, why are people like this? Exactly. Like, even when I talk about rapists, I don't use that kind of whatever. Gigi says, my stepdad always saw me as competition. Anytime I know something, I knew something he didn't. He had to challenge me or take me down a peg. Oh my god. I have a family member like that, not my dad. I have a family member like that. It's so annoying. Literally, I have another family member who was studying. Um, the, he definitely would have done this even if she was a man, but probably not to the same degree. I have a family member who was in university for like a very specific specialty. 
at Christmas, this family member was telling us, like, what she's learning about it and, like, what, like, the career options are and whatever, okay? Then this male family member, oh, no, I watched a documentary on that. Let me tell you all about it. The female family member would, like, interject and be like, well, maybe it's like that in, like, Hollywood or something, but, like, that's not how it is, you know? Like, she was trying to, like, be like, well, what you know might be true in this situation, but, like, in these, you know, she was trying to, like, gently be like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And he kept, like, interrupting her and cutting her off and, like, mansplaining her own fucking specialty to her. I know, it's, like, for fuck's sake. Howard says medical supplies are all for men too. Dragon says women die because men are men um, don't think about us. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, Hannah. Hannah says, I'm so sorry you went all through that. My dad told me I wasn't in his will because I was quote unquote only a girl. Dude, is your dad like a duke or something? Who the fuck thinks that way? I mean, I guess men. Okay, whatever. Okay. So. Then the third section of the paragraph of the essay is basically about like, so we feminists, we know women have personhood. Some women think it's a worthwhile pursuit to try to convince men that we have personhood. Other women. Other women seem to be, you know, as Uta was using the term male captured, that they are like the male chauvinist, even though they're female, that they're in that mindset. And yet there are either another group of women still who are like, it is so obvious we should have personhood, even, you know, deigning to speak about it is like ridiculous. Um, then she talks about how some women have been socialized or... What was the term? She Enculturated, maybe that's a better term. To view personhood as some kind of institutional concept. That she, here she uses the example as being a knight or a, or a lawyer. To some it seems that person denotes a social or institutional role that one may be allowed or forbidden to adopt that role. Okay, this is like so queer theory and so liberal feminism. Because remember how in the... Um, oppression essay she talks about how there's bar like when you when there's oppression there's some kind of a barrier and often often it's a barrier on both sides but it's only negative affected negatively affecting one side she used the example of like a ghetto and how white white dudes because again she's this is basing mostly in the 70s her essay white dudes want to go to the ghetto and then they're like oh my god i can't go it's not safe mm, my life so hard yeah okay but then she is like what does that do to him nothing what about the black people who live there? Like, for them, this is, like, an issue of, like, you know, socioeconomic exploitation, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, she's like, there. there's a barrier, and it's felt by both sides, but it only hurts one side. What am I even fucking talking about here? Right. Fuck, I lost my train of thought. I shouldn't look at the live chat. Mm. Oh, yeah, okay, liberal feminism. So... What is it the liberal feminists do when they're coddling the scrotes? Oh, men, they're not considered real parents. You know, like, it's so oppressive to them that they want to be able to, like, take on this label or this role in society, and it's denied to them. The poor men. That is basically, like, all queer, or queer theory. Like, you know, like, what if men want to be sex workers? Like, they should have the choice to take on that role in society. Like, like, it's very queer theory, right? So, let's read that section that kind of references this a bit. Um, and be loud. Okay. To some, it seems that person denotes a social or institutional role that one may be allowed or forbidden to adopt that role. It seems that we, persons, 
have some sort of power to admit creatures to personhood. Um, I do not find this view plausible, but it surely recommends itself. Yeah, exactly. Dragon says shit lib fem 101. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Some phallists give every sign of accepting this or a similar view. Sorry. Let me just back up. I do not find this view plausible, but it surely recommends itself to some, and it must be attractive to phallists who fancy the power to create persons. His refusal to perceive women as persons could be taken by him as an exercise of his power. Some phallists give every sign of accepting this or a similar view, and some women seem to be taken in by it too. Hence, some women are worked into the position of asking to be granted personhood. It is a peculiar position for a person to be in, but such are the almost inevitable effects of phallus manipulation on those not forewarned. Of course, so basically brainwashed. Um, of course, one cannot... Make what is a person not a person by wishing it so. And yet, some vague impression lingers that phallus do just that. But it's not a vague impression. Because if a man discounts women as persons, his actions reflect that. And when a man is in a position of authority, his actions have power. More than his perceptions or his thoughts. Um, yeah. Okay. And yet some vague impression lingers that phallus do just that, and it is not without encouragement that it lingers. Yeah. Oh my god. This section. I literally was like... It's, I keep having the same feeling with this book that I have whenever I'm reading gay history books, which is that like all of queer theory is nothing new, and we've seen this before. This isn't exactly that, but it just was like felt it felt like it was fucking addressing the issue specifically. Every concept has some standard use or uses in some community, the quote unquote conceptual community whose usage fixes its correct application. While admitting that various hedges and qualifications should be made here, one may say that generally, if everyone in the community were where the concept of Y is in general use declares X to be Y, then X's are Y's. For concepts employed only by specialists or, say, used with only within certain neighborhoods, the relevant conceptual communities consist of those specialists or the residents of those neighborhoods. In general, it is the conceptual community whose use of a concept fixes its correct application simply consists of all the people who use it. To determine its correct application, one identifies the person who use it and then describes or characterizes their use of it. Okay, so this to me was like how queer theory... How queer theory, sorry, has taken over like language, which is basically what she's what she is saying is like when you have enough people in one specific demographic that use a word in this way, the word basically takes on that new meaning. I'm not being a TRA here. I'm just saying what she is describing is what makes is the concept that queer theorists put forth, which is that, like, you know, if you have enough lesbians who won't call themselves lesbians, you now have a valid category, a visible category of women who exist who are homosexual and refuse to accept their homosexuality. If you have enough people who call themselves lesbians who are accepted and viewed and taken in as queer people and they say a penis person is a lesbian well according to them within their community because they are the conceptual community they have made it so and it's like it erases us says VF exactly and it's like just because the people in the positions of power have decided to change language doesn't mean the reality of it changes, and that's what her point is here. Komatashi says, eventually the usage and definition will change. Yeah. 
well, even in this book, literally, I think it's the first essay, she says, like, lesbian, straight, or both. Like, so to her, lesbian just means attraction to women at all in the in, in at all. Doesn't mean an exclusive attraction to women. So even within this book, she's demonstrating that language evolves, yeah. It erases us, it's manufactured consent. Yes, VF, yes. So, you know, if you have enough community members that one looking from the outside in says, well, that's most of the community. Is it most of the community? I don't know. I don't think so. Then they have the power to do this. If the handful of people in the community with a lot of power say this is okay, then they have the power to do that. Um, evolves or dissolves, says Howard. Exactly, bro. Yeah, it definitely devolves. Mama. Mama. Look at the people. I don't think she understands video chats, but she watches TV. OMG, yo, there's a bunch of Brits here, right? Which also, you're welcome for me doing this very early. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, Karina's like, Momo. <laughs> Maybe I should call my fans like Momo Nights or something. <laughs> like, like as if you were Momo fans rather than my fans. Okay, y'all, I have a very important question for the Brits. First of all, do we like Great British Bake Off? Second question, where can one watch The Great British Bake Off when one is not in the UK watching it on BBC iPlayer or whatever? Okay. And thirdly, is Sue a good character, a good host that makes you want to watch the show? Or is she quite cringy and you want to skip through her? Because I fucking like Sue when I've seen her on like British comedy stuff. Like I watch a lot of like those comedy panel British shows for like many years. But like... There's this TV show, which is like a sketch comedy Canadian female-led TV show. It's called The Baroness Vaughn Sketch Show. It's very, very good. Um, and it's like, it does sketch comedy about liberal feminism. And I don't think that they understand, but when I watch it, it's like fucking satire of liberal feminism. <laughs> anyway, and like, one of the main writers and um, the director is a lesbian. Um Anyway, and she is one of the hosts of Great Canadian, the Great Canadian Baking Show or whatever. It's literally great. It's literally Great British Bake Off. Like, it's the same fucking setting and everything, except it's, like, in Toronto. <laughs> anyway, she is the judge of, like, the third season of Great Canadian, the Great Canadian Baking Show or whatever. And it's, like, every time she opens her mouth, I'm, like, cringing. I'm cringing. I'm, like, I love you. Why are you doing this? Anyway, okay. I will now read. Read. <laughs> Aquamarina says Momonites go to Benji Universe. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'm reading your responses now. Komotachi says Benji, I swear I have you saying Momo in my head sometimes. It doesn't go any higher. Momo, can't you sit like right here? Probably would if it put something here. Mama. Oh yeah, I was reading the responses. Okay. Yogi says the weird fringe stuff I used to only see on Tumblr is mainstream now. Yeah. Um, VF we watch from Momo. Uh, Howard says Bake Off is kind of sacred. Yeah, I know. Um. Oh, I see. Hannah says Great British Bake Off rocked when it was Mel and Sue. Now it's shite. Okay, so should I just like look up on Wikipedia when they became hosts and watch like that span of the show? One of them is married to a troon. Who? Are you telling me that Mel is married to a troon? Gigi says he used to watch it on Sundays on ABC or CBS or NBC at camera. Okay, that's nice, but I don't even have real TV, so. <laughs> um. Sue is the bee's knees. I know. Um, oh, Benji, get a VPN, switch to London, and then, oh, then just watch it on BBC. Yeah, that's okay. Don't I have a VPN? Yeah, I think I just never used it yet. The lesbian on that show is married to a troon. Sue is married to a troon? 
I love Baroness. I don't know who that is. Mel and Sue met at Cambridge. Their radio show was excellent. Oh. Can't stand the new host. Interesting. This is the same situation with the Canadian baking show. That it was like... Well, actually, no. All of the hosts on the Canadian baking show were like really high cringe level. Like, I don't even know if it's them. Because all of them are like have like comedic acting backgrounds. Not even like comedic, like stand-up comedians, like acting backgrounds. And I'm like, clearly someone gave them a script and it's cringy as fuck and they're just trying their best to deliver it. And I'm like, who the fuck is writing this shit? They should be shot. Okay, but not shot. But like, you know what I'm saying? <gasps> yes, gave me $19. Thank you very, very much. Yes, for your 20 American dollars. I assume American dollars. <laughs> yes, I'm not here for Benji or Momo. I'm here to hear the distant sounds of cello. <laughs> there's actually no one playing cello in the house today, which is funny because there's more cellos in the house today than usual. Um, have you guys watched Taskmaster? It's very good and free on YouTube. No, is it like a cooking show? This is for Momo's trains. <laughs> Thank you, ES. She married an aid and she married a tiff. Ugh. Well, you know, at least she didn't go the peen route. That's how you know the bar is really on the fucking ground. You're like, well, she didn't switch to being straight. So that's something. You didn't have to like get up. I handed them to you. I put them like right in there and then she like stood up. Sue and her wife are now divorcing. Well. Ooh, comment actually says yes, and you'll recognize the people in the panel shows. <laughs> a bird killed me says she married a tiff. Ugh, get me a t-shirt with that frame. <laughs> we have such relationships with Aidens are doomed. Yeah, I mean, have we seen any high profile? Tiff maintain a relationship. I don't know anything about Chaz Bono. Maybe she's in a relationship. Really? Do you mean Tatiana Maslani? Which 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 woman from the Orange is the New Act? Because she's Canadian, right? Quirky Dragon says, but the quirky one, Meredith, the one who is great at physical comedy, is starting a new CBC show with a woman from Orange is the New Black. I freaking love all of the women on Baroness Von Sketch show. It is so good. You can, you don't need to have um, um, CBC to watch it. Most of their sketch, almost all their sketches are on YouTube. They're just not like compiled into an episode format. So if you literally go on, um, just go on YouTube and type in Baroness Von Sketch show, you will see, um, like all of these funny sketches and like like literally type in like baroness von sketch so like feminism and most of the things are like satirizing liberal feminism in my opinion in my interpretation of the show okay what were you getting off about oh yeah the x's are y's if everybody agrees that x is y okay So then she gets into this kind of like, you know, if men all agree that this is what a person is and then this a woman doesn't qualify as that, then like from their perspective, that's not a person, like blah, 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 philosophy things. Males who live their lives under the impression that only males are persons and in the belief that this impression is shared by others will see themselves, the persons, as completely con constituting the conceptual community and thence take their agreement in the overt application of the concept of a person, fixing its correct application, much as we all take our agreement in the application of the concept of a tree as fixing its correct application. So basically, I think, therefore, I am. Men view themselves as gods of their own world. Nothing to convince about that. They think that they are the god of their own world, and that's it. That's that. Um... Dragon, we need to get together and like 
have beer or whatever people do when they hang out and like watch Baroness One sketch show. Can't spell handmaiden without aid. <laughs> That should definitely be on a shirt or something. Maybe what I should do is, like, when I reach a certain level of, like, patrons or something, like, once a month, I should, like, custom order a shirt with, like, stuff you guys have said to me. Dragon, I should email you, because I'm actually going to be back in your neck of the woods in March. Which also says I can't imagine the pain of being involved or be, being involved with falling in love. Sorry, I can't imagine the pain involved with falling in love with the lesbian who then goes tiff. I can imagine my younger days convincing myself to stay. Yeah, I tried. <laughs> it's like a bad call. Okay. Um, right. The self-deceptive denial that women are full persons adds up to an attempt to usurp the community's control over concepts in general by denying female membership in the conceptual community, or rather, by failing to see that they are members of the conceptual community. So, if the conceptual community is persons who are deciding who are other persons, if you are a man and you only consider, like, the stakeholders or... Um, I think stakeholders is the best word. You only consider other men to be stakeholders in the decision of who is and isn't a person. Then it's not like women saying that other women are persons is going to make a difference to you. So she's basically saying this um this whole concept of like we should fight with men to like make them see that we're persons is like they are so phallocentric that there is no woman who could convince them of this because they don't see us as persons. Um, right. Okay, I'm just going to read the whole last paragraph of the essay to just like, and reply to that and round it out and then we can talk about random bullshit. Okay. The rejection of females by phallists is both morally and conceptually profound. The refusal to perceive females as persons is conceptually profound because it excludes females from that community whose conception of things one allows to influence one's own concepts. It serves as a police lock on closed mind. Furthermore, the refusal to treat women with the due respect to persons is in itself a violation of a moral principle that seems to many to be the founding principle of all morality. This violation of moral principle is sustained by an active manipulation of, of circumstances that is systemic and habitual and unacknowledged. The exclusion of women from the conceptual community simultaneously excludes them from the moral community. So, this manipulation here is designed not just to dodge particular get yeah, particular applications of moral principles, but to narrow the moral community itself, and is therefore particularly insidious. It is the sort of thing that leavens the moral schizophrenia of the gentle, honest, God-fearing racist monster, the self-anointed ubermensch, and other moral deviates. The phallist is confined with the worst of moral company in a self-designed conceptual closet, and he has taken great pains to ensure that this escape will not be abetted by any woman. So, she's basically saying what I just said, which is that if men view themselves as the gods of their own little worlds, why the fuck would they care what anybody else has to say about it? And also, if they view only other males as stakeholders in who is a person, then... Then women's moral reaction or opinion on the act of denying personhood to women doesn't matter because they're not persons so why would you listen to what they have to say um And then she kind of ends the paragraph by saying that this is like, um, thank you so much for your 1999 ES. It's about to run out. <laughs> um, this is a phenomenon observable 
in smaller communities. I mean, that's I think what she's trying to say when she mentions um the gentle god honest or sorry, the gentle, honest, god fearing racist monster, the self anointed Ubermensch, and the other moral deviates that they view their position as morally good. And because of this, they only consider other people with their position, with their morals, to have personhood. And so it's only their opinions which reinforce their own that they need to consider. Um, that's basically what I understand what she's trying to say. Um, yeah. Anyway, I liked this essay. It's very interesting. Um, I don't think you need to listen to all the essays in a row for them to make sense. But this is the third essay. And I... Th so far, it seems to me that the essays are in an order to, like, construct concepts to build on top of each other. At least that's how it seems to me. Um, and I really enjoy that. Uh, I'm actually wondering, like, it's 4.30. I don't know. I already worked eight hours today, and then I came home and did this. I'm wondering if I should, like, read the next essay. Well, let's see how many pages it is. Because I can just, I can do what I was going to do tomorrow morning and just do the next chapter tomorrow morning instead of this one. Reflections on separatism. Oh, no, wait. In and out of Harmsbury starts on page 52, ends on page 84. Never mind. I am not reading a 30 page essay tonight. Let's see. Yeah. This essay is like a sixth of the book. I don't think I'm going to do that tonight. I'm going to start in the morning when I'm well rested. Okay. Now I'm going to read your stuffs. All right. <laughs> VF, that's why I call them hand aidens. Um... Dragon says, Meredith on Baroness is my favorite. She's so good at physical comedy. She's like a new Carol Burnett. I honestly, when watching her, she kind of reminds me of, um, like... Oh my god, my brain. There, yeah, that's fucking him. Rowan Atkinson, almost. She is like Rowan Atkinson except that she has more depth than him because he seems like his strength is really physical comedy like without physical comedy he seems quite limited her without physical doing only like you know verbal and like emotional stuff she's very capable so i would say she is like a better version of rowan atkinson <laughs> and also she's canadian and a woman um something i really like about her specifically is that so, like, this sketch comedy show, there's four women. And so, like, as a result, there's a lot of lesbian couples because it's, like, any situation where there's a couple, it's, like, them, right? Well, there's, like, there's, like, some men who are, like, supporting. I guess they're, like, regular cast, but they're only in a couple of sketches every episode. They're always, like, and they're usually the butts of the jokes. <laughs> um, but anyway, there's, like, a lot of, like, lesbian couples in the sketch show just because it's, like, a female-only sketch show. And whenever Meredith does the lesbian characters, it's like, she does it like in a respectful way, but it's so accurate. <laughs> like, I don't know how to explain it. Like the vibe she gives off when playing the lesbian characters to me is very like, you know what? I like you. That's the kind of vibe I guess. <laughs> but I'm like, yes, I like you. Um, <laughs> um Kiara says there are more trans-identified women in the community than there are ones who aren't. Yeah, I know. Um, were you saying something about dating? It's, excuse me. Oh, Kiara says it's hard finding women I'm attracted to who don't see themselves as non-women. It's exhausting. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm into like mask or both. I, like it's not disqualifying if you're not, but I've only ever been like attracted to like a handful of women in my whole life and they were all like so yeah i totally know what you mean kiara i feel like kiara you and i have said this to each other before perhaps in a live stream um uh 
A bird killed me says, I know a lesbian whose girlfriend became an Aiden. The lesbian started calling herself, quote unquote, pansexual Psy. Aiden then broke up with her to try and date straight women. Mission failed, LMAO. Okay, but did the mission fail? Because was the mission to make their relationship successful or to convert her to this bullshit? Because if the mission was to convert her to the bullshit, then it was very successful. Because I, I hope, I mean, you can tell me a bird killed me. The, after this Aiden left the situation that this woman was not so psychologically scarred that she permanently thought she was a pansexual um, and needs to therefore start dating people of all genders or whatever. Um, to me, yeah, this is not a failed mission. This You have un-lesbian a lesbian. And I think that if you view that gender ideology as essentially and intrinsically homophobic and you view it you 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 look at it through the lens of you know what homophobia did they accomplish then i think they they were successful um <clears throat> also care with that there are more trans identified women in the community than there are ones who aren't that is why the like if x group says that x equals y then to that group x equals y like what she was saying in the essay that's why it's gotten so far like the whole thing is fueled by self-hatred, right? By, like, a denial of the self and, like, a wish to superimpose an imaginary self onto the real self, right? Women are very susceptible to that, right? Lesbians have so much, like, generational trauma, interpersonal trauma, self-hatred, shame, isolation. Like, they are the perfect fucking group to do anything fueled on self-hatred and self-denial. Um, and, yeah. Uh, it has a huge effect on the rest of us, minority, who are not trans-identified. <laughs> Which is, like, so fucking ironic, because, you know, back, like, pre-2012... A lot of um, TIFFs, they were always on about, like, you know, people associate us with lesbians. They think that a TIFF is just, like, a butch who's too butch to be a woman. And, like, that's not fair. And, like, why is it that we're supposed to be, like, in dyke bars to, like, have sex with, like, women who are attracted to us? Like, we're straight men. Like, okay, this wasn't everyone, but there was this sentiment, right? And it's, like... <sighs> you didn't want to be associated with us. And so this is what's happened. And now we don't want to be associated with you and we can't do it. <laughs> like, like, it's like a one, it's a one way situation. Okay. Um, Dragon says, I'm a committed bachelor. I couldn't bear trying to wage through the trunage. I am not a committed bachelor, but I am decidedly, like, I'm rad femsexual. <laughs> I can own, and like this time, I think my, my, li my like, standards for what is a rad femme for in a potential girlfriend are going to be much higher. <laughs> um, just because, you know, my ex, like, flipped sides, so. Um... Michelle says, yeah, but that, but what's interesting now, Benji, is that men can see a quote-unquote feminine facsimile and see them as human. How odd is that? Because the feminine facsimile is male. Um, and also, I was thinking of this while I was reading about how men get to dis like assign and unassign personhood. And I was thinking, um, oh, is Cyber here? Hello, Cyber. Um, and I was thinking, have you, like with transhumanism and stuff, you guys seen, is it Martin Rothblatt or Martin Martin, whatever, who um has like some kind of robot of like a copy of his wife or some creepy shit. Um, and, you know, there's like all these gamer bros and especially in like Germany and Japan and shit who like all of this stuff about being like in a relationship with their sex doll and all this crap. Um, And it's like. If a man is the one assigning and unassigning personhood right 
she postulates that this is based on characteristics that would qualify or disqualify one from being a person. I would argue that based on what we've seen in the, like, I don't know what you would call it, like a sexual access movement of the last, like, since the 90s or 80s or whatever, that what a man Danes is or is not a person is 100% in service of his sexual access. What do I mean? Well, if you want to see a woman get brutalized in porn, don't think of her as a woman. Don't think of her as a person. Think of her only as a female. And when I use female in this context, I'm using it in the context of like a chauvinist man. So, you know, if one is a female, it is mutually exclusive from being a person. So view her only, I'll use femoid. I, that's their term, an incel, male incels. They use that as a term for women. So do you want to see a woman in like such a violent or like physically disturbing situation that you wouldn't be comfortable seeing a person in that situation? Compartmentalize, categorize her as a femoid. Good. Do you want your sex doll to come with you to work and go with you to the restaurant? Categorize her as a woman. There you go. Problem solved. Like, it really seems to me like if it's all in service of their peen feels, then why wouldn't they do what I've just described? Right? Um... Is the show called Baroness? It's called Baroness Von Sketch Show. Baroness Von Sketch Show. I was so disappointed. Like, they started their show, like, what, two years before COVID? Yeah. And then, you know, everything stopped, obviously. My roommate started watching the Great Canadian Baking Show during COVID. And it literally was like, why aren't they wearing masks? And they were like, this was filmed pre-COVID. <laughs> okay. There is the link to the Wikipedia page about the show. Okay. What's Akkadian literature spelt that way? I don't know. Akkadian with two Ks. What is that? Okay. Have you watched Blackadder and Rowan's Rowan Atkins's stage performances? I have only see, seen seen. His, like, what is it, Red Nose Day. And, like, the only Rowan Atkinson stage performances that I've seen are the ones that were, like, filmed on the BBC. There's a couple of stage performances of his because those are on YouTube. Um, I have seen everything that Rowan Atkinson is in. I am an avid fan of, like, old-school British comedy. Like, Yeah. Even contemporary. I just like British stuff. So, like, I've watched, like, most of the major British comedies since, like, Monty Python. Which I have to say, even though it's very male-centric, it's definitely better for you. It's better for you than watching James Bond and shit like that. Um, oh, the mission for Aiden to date straight women. She failed that well. Yeah. Because the only women who want to date Aidens are like bi's or women who want to be bi's. Okay. VF is like het women don't want that except when the het women want to be queer women then they want that because like okay imagine 
and I know this is going to be really out there because you're all, most of you are lesbians, but imagine for a second that you are a straight woman. I know it's crazy. Okay. So you're a straight woman and you want to be with the queers because that's cool and whatever. And like, because you feel that every type of oppression you face as a woman is unspeakable and that that's like not worth any attention. But if you have a queer identity, then the things that you experience are that are bad, then it's worth attention. Anyway, so you feel you need to like be a queer for whatever reason. What kind of a relationship can you have to substantiate your queerness? Well, you can date a Tim, because that's the male, but it's a woman, so it's like a lesbian. Or you can date a Tiff. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I'm straight. I'm not attracted to women. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't thinking that. I had to like put the words in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> it feels funny saying that. Huh. <laughs> Who's going to clip this out of my video and be like, look, she's been lying to us. Okay. Um, but are you religious? Are you a cultist? Do you truly believe that if a, if a woman says she's a man, that she's a man? Obviously you do, because otherwise you're an evil person who deserves death, right? So if you obviously believe this and you want to substantiate your straight relationship, there is a very easy way to do this. And it is something that I'm sure all the lesbians are very, very, very familiar with. You can let the lesbian do stuff to you and never do anything to her. As straight women are wont to do with lesbians. Like, I have met, I've talked to um, some D-trans women and some TIFFs who have been in that situation. And they're like, well, at the time I was, like, cool with that. Because she was valid, like, it felt to me like her validating my identity was, like, really important. And it was, like, a kind of trade-off. But then it's like, especially if you talk to D-trans women who've been through that, they're like, it's literally the same thing as when, like, you have a straight friend in, like, college or, or high school or whatever who, like, she will, like, let you do stuff to her. But then, like, when you're, like, in public, she'll act like she doesn't know who you are. Like, it's literally that. Except they're utilizing you to, like, a further... If they're not only utilizing you sexually, they're utilizing you, like, um, socially as well. I don't know. Because, like, if, if you were to be, like, yeah, we're a lesbian couple, or, like, yeah, I'm a woman and she loves me, they'd be, like, ew, no, gross. Right? But because it has, like, a social advantage, then they're, anyway. Yes, Aqua, I have seen this. I screen capped it. Aqua is, like, this reminds me that Aaron Terrell tweeted the other day about gay men being born gay but lesbians yeah Aaron Terrell was like for men sexuality is um nature and for women sexuality is nurture and honestly my very first thought when I read her thread because I kept going through it and being like I want more like what does she think what does she think so I found more spots where she was replying to people and, like, it seems to me that she has fundamentally misunderstood or something. Sexology. We all hate sexologists, whatever, whatever. But something we can all agree on, I think, is that men, like, they can be sexual with way less emotions and with, like, just, like, a visible, viscer a visible visceral response, right? I'm not saying women don't have that, but it is, like, a generally... It's general truth that for women, sex has an emotional component. And so to me, it's like, if your sexual feelings are very dependent on your emotional state, and I don't even mean like who you're attracted to. I mean like, you know, how much attraction you feel, how comfortable you feel with like, um, observing your arousal and like really really basic shit like that if your emotions have the power to change that kind of stuff then like or like your emotional setting or like that point of your life where you are like emotionally with your family and like your job and like if those kind of things all have the capacity to like slightly change your self-perception and everything it's like women are just more like sexually different than men so being like Men are like this and women are not the same. Therefore, women, it's like a completely different thing. It's like, it's just stupid. What I'm saying is that it's stupid. Okay. 
a bird killed me says aiden's date a lot of other aiden's i see that a, a lot of couple um yeah uh i it's for a few different reasons like first of all if you're like a butch for butch that's the way to do it without getting harassed which is like i don't know you guys are probably not familiar unless you're like from a tumblr person like me um <clears throat> but the um There is, like, a very strong feeling that, like, mask-for-mask mask lesbians are somehow, like, that's toxic masculinity in the LGBT and, like, they're using their mask privilege and, like, all of this shit. Like, basically, TRAs see that as, like, you are just as much of a problem as men, which is obviously wildly homophobic. Um, so, to not face all this discrimination from within your community... Right, if you're a cultist, the solution is to call yourself trans because then you have agency over your sexuality. I mean, TIFFs obviously less to the to less or extent than Tim's, but to more of an extent than non-trans identified TIFF, than a non-trans identified female. And there's this saying that you are attracted to trans masks is a socially acceptable way of saying I'm only attracted to like masculine women. Um so you see that a lot. Also, I think a bunch of them are like, they're fetishizing gay male relationships. And it's because they both are fetishizing the same thing that they know how to like, play the role or like, empathize or like, whatever. But they're like on the same page about things, right? I think that's a lot of the times what you're happening when you see like, two tiffs dating each other. Michelle says, interesting, if he has access, then non-human. If he has no access, human. Um, yeah. Sorry. The thing, like, jumped down. Okay, here we are. <laughs> Thanks, Cyber. <laughs> Akkadian is one of the world's oldest civilizations. Oh, very interesting. Um, Cyber says that she doesn't want to date anyone trans and she's a bisexual. No, 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 I know. But I obviously mean, like, bisexual cultists. I'm not trying to buy into this whole idea of, like, oh, well, you're bi, so you're attracted to, like, masculinity and man and femininity and women, so you should be attracted to, like, feminine men or masculine women. I wasn't trying to, like, do that whole queer bullshit. I was just saying it's, like, bisexuals are the only demographic which are like theoretically possible of maintaining a long-term relationship with a trans person especially as they go in whichever direction like becoming more masculinized or more feminized or whatever but like i mean have you seen the data about trans people and long-term relationships it doesn't that doesn't happen <laughs> howard how do you know what a stone butch is um not even pillow princesses because they mean not all quote unquote straight women are pillow queens. Well, thanks for letting us know, Dragon. But, um. Yeah, Dragon is like, oh my god, when I was truning, we were like fetishized. So a lot of het women then. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Kiara says, I think, um, Erin is just projecting. I don't know about how she said that, like, female sexuality is like 
um, environmental and that male sexuality is like innate. Also, like, it's kind of insane to me that you would make that statement and not stop and be like, hmm, I wonder if there's a social component to that. I wonder if it's anything to do with, like, <sighs> rape culture and lesbophobia and male domination and power structures and, like, women's desperation for, like, safety and security and resources and shit like that. Maybe that's something to do with it, guys. I don't know. Like, maybe there is not an incentive for men to give up what makes them happy in order to, like, succeed or survive by marrying women. Maybe that incentive is much bigger in women. Maybe. I don't know. It's just crazy to make that statement and not for one second consider, like, oh, maybe there's a social aspect to this. Like... <clears throat> You guys seen that data about how women, like, I can't remember the numbers now. I'm just going to, like, th roughly throw out a generally, this is going to be, like, within 20% of accuracy, so take it with a huge grain of salt. It was, like, <sighs> okay, I'm not even going to try and say numbers. I'm just going to say most, okay. Most women do not orgasm from penetrative sex with their heterosexual partners, okay? Most women report that if they feel pain during intercourse, their heterosexual partner, they're not going to tell him. Right? And they're going to keep going. Most women consider, most of the women who experience pain during intercourse with men, consider it to be, like, kind of unavoidable and acceptable and, like, that's the way it is. Okay, given that we know this about women... Like, to the point of, like, someone is putting something in my body that hurts and I'm going to shut my fucking mouth about it, okay? Do we know that women are willing to put themselves in that situation? Why? They've been groomed and conditioned to please men, that they need a man, that this is best, heterosex is the best ever, blah, 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 okay? If we know women are willing to put themselves in that situation, it is not beyond the realm of possibility right that women will put themselves in other situations that are very bad for them and keep their fucking mouth shut anyway okay michelle says honestly what was the thing that we older lesbians had to get past I had no idea lesbians even existed until my late teens. Yes, there is a vast difference in our sexuality. Yes. Like, I really, really think, like, so many gay boys, they literally are just like, you know, I saw a dude and I got a boner and that kept happening. So I was like, I guess I'm attracted to guys. Women don't have that. How many, like, 13-year-old girls are like, yeah, every time I see this, like, hot chick, I get turned on. No. The women aren't like that. We don't have, like, the same data to base our, um, like, self-perception on at an early age, like boys do. And, like, that's fine. But, like, we're different. We don't need to, like, be the same for it to be, like, equally respected, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes says straight women here find women aesthetically beautiful and much better humans I don't want to sleep with them vibrators have been invented that is true that's something else with women too like you ever talk to a straight woman about sex so many straight women are like you know if I like if I really want an orgasm I'll go home and use a vibrator and it's like so what are you getting out of hooking up with men if you're telling me that you cannot usually orgasm with like what is the incentive to do that why would you choose that over that i don't get it um i guess loneliness Yes, yeah, says I'd rephrase it to if you are you are human only if he finds you sexually desirable. 
no, no, it's the reverse of that. It's, I guess what I'm kind of, I was kind of making my own version of the Madonna whore complex, but to do with personhood specifically rather than like people's expectations of you. Um, exactly, Kiara. Kiara says everyone's taste is a personal preference, but sexual orientation is orientation exactly. Dragon says, I used to be an absolute news junkie, but I had to turn it off when I did sleep. I'd have COVID dreams. Yeah. I used to be, like, really into politics and stuff. And then I think it was, like, the first year of Trump. I kind of burnt out. I was, like, it was so, like, emotional. Like, such an emotional roller coaster with Trump of, like, the ups and downs. and the, Like, do you remember he, like, almost started a fucking nuclear war with North Korea over Twitter? And, like, every other fucking day, it's, like, something with the press secretary and the what. I was just, like... It is too much. Like, and then I was like, no, I'm done. And at the beginning of COVID, I was like, wow, this is like, you know, really crazy. And like the first time this has ever happened like this, like, you know, in the age of the information technology. Um, and like, like, wow, this is so crazy. Like, it's important. I need to keep track of what's going on. And I was like, no, like I literally have intentionally stopped watching any news to do with COVID. It's like, I can't. Um, VF says there's a reason the lesbians are oppressed and erased and have to hide. Exactly. Was that about my comment? I was talking about the Hunter Gatherer Society. I don't remember, Michelle. I think it's okay. Um. Oh, very interesting, Aquamarina. Aquamarina says, Aaron creates an argument that implies conversion is possible because it's not innate. I think she hates herself so much for what she's done. Oh. Where'd it go? Ah. She hates herself so much for what she's done that she's had to deny her own lesbianism in order to perform... Like, Aaron Terrell is such a man that her quote-unquote gayness has overpowered the nature of lesbianism. And she can be the manliest by being a gay man. It's super obvious to me. Yeah, it's kind of... I don't know if any of you watched my video, um, How a Lesbian Can Believe She's a Gay Trans Man. But that's kind of what it is. Um, they feel so insecure about the fact that they're a lesbian. That they want to be the farthest thing from a lesbian. The farthest thing from a lesbian is a man who's attracted to men. Um, yeah. Dragon, I call those straight women lesbian tourists. Yeah. Yogi says, I think it's like 80%. Are you talking about the... The, like, pain during sex and not having orgasms or something? Yeah, it's some huge number. It's like the vast majority of women. Um, Kamatashio says, two-thirds of women don't regularly orgasm for penetration. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Howard says you sound like Dorkin. It's a compliment. Thank you. Um, a bird killed me. Says I, th I think I've read like only 2% of women could reach climax from penetrative sex. Yeah. Kamatashi says I've heard stories of women I was dating accepting pain and not speaking up in previous relationships they had with men. Yeah, I've heard that kind of thing too. Um, um, it's really depressing. Like I... Whenever women tell me that, I'm like, why? Why? If someone was punching you in the face, would you, like, sit there and bear it because you wanted to be nice? But because they're doing it to your genitals, that's somehow fine? Why? If it hurts, tell them to fuck off and stop. Well, obviously, like, you need to be tactful about it so they don't, like, harass, like, you know, attack you. 
because you're like in a vulnerable situation but like yes as it seems that our female levels of testosterone allow us better ability to control our urges i think that's part of it but i think a huge part of it is psychological um dragon also think i have nice hands what does it mean that i have nice hands also isn't that kind of like a lesbian come on <laughs> aqua i thought you were straight <laughs> okay Ooh, hannah brings out the boston marriage Boston marriages isn't the same as cultural pressure as per Jane Austen and George at Hare for women to need to have female companionship to protect their quote-unquote honor. Mm -hmm. Oh, VF says I, I secretly was what I kept it to myself ref referring to like being aroused by girls at a young age so you understood that you were attracted to girls. No, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Um, they definitely talk to lesbians who've had that. But I think that it's pretty uncommon for lesbians to have that at a young age. Whereas I think for um, gay men, it comes, becomes like quite unavoidable when puberty hits. <laughs> oh, true. Kometachi says the hormones from physical contact with another being are not replaceable by a toy no matter how bad the man is true true um oh my god i'm so far behind in the chat i'm catching up kara says so many women don't even ask themselves who or what arouses them when they question their sexuality i completely agree like um <clears throat> i was saying this other day i think that a lot of teenage girls, their sexuality is literally just like a mirror of their male counterpart's sexuality. Because they've been socialized that, like, you know, to be a woman is to, like, give a man what he wants and, like, you know, like, be nice and, like, be accommodating. And, like, if he cares about you, like, he, you know, you want to keep him, you better, like, reward him and all this shit. Like, when my friends in high school started having sex, I remember being, like, do you... Well, I didn't know what fucking orgasm was when they started having sex. But there was a point when I was 18 when I knew what the clitoris was and I knew what an orgasm, the like females could orgasm, where I asked some of my friends, like, you know, like, do you orgasm when you have sex with your boyfriend? Or, like, is it, like, enjoyable for you? And, like, universally, every single one of them was, like, no, but, like, he loves me or likes me or, like, I like him or whatever, and so I want to give him what he wants. Like, literally every single fucking teenage girl that I've ever spoken to about sex, their perspective is, like, is one of two perspectives. Either, one, this is validating for me in some way because I think I need attention or I need love and th this is my attention and love, or this is what he wants from me and I feel I need to give him what he wants for whichever reason. And it's, like, that is not the reason you should be having sex. You should be having sex because you know what you're attracted to or which acts you enjoy and you want to do those. That's it. That's the only reason you should be having sex. It's like, it's, it's like they, the way they talked about having sex is like, oh, well, I have a car and he needed a ride somewhere so I thought I'd give him a car ride. It's like, that's your fucking body, man. Anyway. Oh, uh, Dragon's talking about the news and how the Canadian news is full of Trump. Like, on one hand, it's, like, quite understandable, you know, that, like, the what happens in the U.S. has a huge effect on Canada, obviously. Um, like, for Americans, maybe you don't know, but our economy is, like, you are, like, the number one economy most intrinsically linked to the Canadian economy. Um, like, when all that tariff and tax stuff was going on with Trump, like, he just wanted to, like, add a bunch of tariffs to Canada... And people were like, why are you making such a big deal? I was like, because you are like the number one importer and exporter of our country. That is like having a, anyway. 
But so it's like understandable. But then also it really, really pisses me off when people act like Canada is basically America and like everything that's happening there is happening here and everything that people think over there, people think over here. And that like to the point where like our fucking politicians act like they're a part of sometimes to me, it's like they're acting like they're part of the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. And I'm like, are you a fucking Canadian or what? Anyway. Um, oh, interesting, Michelle. Michelle says, I honestly tried to understand the reasoning of political lesbians. I think they are trying to say... That means women who honestly believe themselves to be hetero are lost. Yeah. Um, I know someone who met up with Sheila Jeffries. Um, when was that? Maybe 2017 or 2018. And she says that the tone and like just the way Sheila Jeffries talks is like every woman is a lesbian and just hasn't realized it yet. And she found that disrespectful. And thought about that and i was like because from her from sheila jeffrey's perspective as a political lesbian she must think you know every woman has the power to like center women in her life to whichever degree she wants to and she just hasn't woken up and realized it's in her own interest to do that yet um but yes i understand what you're saying michelle i hadn't thought of it that way that makes a lot of sense um A VF says, I was curious about female bodies and kissing young, but really felt shame and attacked and bullied for getting outed as the Leza school that I tried to deny and fight it till college. Yeah, I remember you saying that you like tried to pretend you were straight until college. That really sucks. Um... Ugh, yeah, Aqua. Aqua's like, now they get punched in the face while they get unhappy intercourse. I hate this timeline. This is definitely the darkest timeline. I also hate it. <gasps> Rachel F is here. Hello, Rachel. Um, um, Oh, Howard points out that my analogy wasn't great because women will just stand there and let men punch them anyway, too. True enough. Um, Rachel F says, comp head is super encouraged by TRAs. And then, okay, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Rachel, but I think in this instance, actually, I'm going to go down and read all of Rachel's comments and then I'll conjecture. <laughs> uh Um, oh, here we are. Fuck, I really lost track of the live of the live chat, guys. Uh, where the fuck did it go? Rachel, comp het is super encouraged by TRAs, and the men in the community sexualize the fuck out of, um, if quote unquote trans men. I only ever knew one trans man who stuck with being a lesbian. All others were quote unquote gay. Rachel F says Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yes, there is a massive pressure. Like, I've talked about this before too, that <sighs> obviously the trans community, the queer community, they treat women like women and men like men, whether you have a pronoun or a gender or not, right? Um, which is evident in the fact that, you know, like, 
if a Tim says that he only wants to sleep with like biological women because other Tims make him dysphoric, that's okay. If a Tiff says that, that's not okay, right? So it's evident. Um, but yes, so I would say that. Okay, so in this context, I think when when Rachel is using the term comp het, she's specifically referring to the fact that like, you know, these might be lesbians. But their internalized lesbophobia or their denial or their even if they like consciously know they're lesbians but like don't want to be right all of this is uniformly and unanimously this position that that's gross and that's bad and you can be better than that is supported by trans activists um like if you are a lesbian and you want to like convert yourself like the best way to do it for free and get a lot of support is to become a trans man, because then you will find a fuck ton of queer people who will support you in your quest to make yourself straight. Um, and it's very, very fucking disturbing. Um, because I was in that boat. I thought that if I had sex with, like, a man and I was being gay, that this was me, like, overcoming my heterosexuality. That was me overcoming my homosexuality. And, like, Forcing myself to try to, like, you know, be, like, attracted to penis and, like, enjoy men. Um, and this position was uniformly and unanimously supported by every single TRA I ever had any interaction with. Not once was somebody, like, is that truly what you want? Or, you know what I mean? Like, not once did anybody ever question it or, like... Be like, are you really looking out for your own well-being? And, like, you have a lot of mental health issues. Maybe this is something to be, like, questioned. No. Um. Oh, my gosh. Now Ocarina is describing in detail. <laughs> Ocarina, your hands are creamy and your fingers are graceful and long. And I am straight, but the more I learn about lesbians, I think, man, this is an option I never really understood until this lesbian's me. <laughs> in like 10 years, Awkward Marina will be like, I came out because of Benji. <laughs> I was in all of her her women's spaces online. And <laughs> I realized. Uh... Hannah says, thank you for the last analogy, Benji. No, I wouldn't let anyone punch me in the face or anything or anywhere. So yeah, accepting that violation and aggression is in a relationship is horrendous. Yeah. I guess Howard is right that women let themselves get punched in the face by their partners. But I think it just demonstrates that it's like women have truly depersonalized their sex conceptually. Right? Like, and I mean, their sex, like their anatomy. Um... And their sexual desire. Like, their sex in every sense of the word sex, I guess. Um, they've been so depersonalized and so... Yeah. Like, lacking personhood. That it's seen as, like, well, that's not really a bad thing if it's happening to them. It's like, literally every bad sexual situation... Replace all of the women in the situation. Like, imagine it as a gay men's situation. And suddenly you'll be like, oh my god. He's okay with that? And then be like, wait... But why did I have to superimpose it onto men to understand why it was bad? Why couldn't I see that when I was looking at women? Because you've been brainwashed into thinking that women deserve that and expect that and that's what they're made for and they'll be okay with that and they're used to it and blah, 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 all this bullshit. Yeah. VF says, I'm a feminist and a lesbian, not a lesbian for feminism. That's a good way of putting it, yeah. Um, Although I would say that my my lesbianism, like, that's a good, my lesbianism is a very solid foundation on which to build my feminism. Or even that my lesbianism necessitates feminism. 
honestly. Um, Oh, Lisa's still here. <laughs> is she, though? Because I'm probably, like, 20 minutes behind in the live chat. I'm trying to just, like, go and not or to say too much. Yeah, Dragon, I wonder... She's saying she doesn't want to be a political lesbian. I would like to know... Like, not that somebody should go out and do this, but if some woman has already done this. I know there's so many lesbians who slept with straight women. I wonder... If they would, if there's a difference between sleeping with like a straight woman and a political lesbian, I guess experience might be the difference, but I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Anyway. Hannah says, oh, hell no. Us Brits see Canada as being like Europe. Multiple cultures, multiple languages, and political parties, but colder. Yeah, I would say so. Although, it seems that our political parties are diverse. However, when you actually look at like what they do and what they think and all that crap, they're not that diverse. They're all kind of, it's kind of more like two parties that looks like four parties. Um... I had no idea about this Mary Daly lesbian thing. I've actually, I think I've read some Mary Daly essays early on in my radical feminism, but I don't think I've read um, any of her books. Um, yes, the, Looney28 says, I think it's cruel if straight woman forces herself into a lesbian relationship because she's lying to her partner. I've seen so many women do this when they leave their husbands. And lead lesbians on. Yeah, that is one of the major criticisms that I've heard of political lesbians. Like, aside from the fact that they're, like, not lesbians and they're, like, you know, appropriating that term. Is that, like, it's not, like, a neutral thing to masquerade as another sexuality. Like, especially if you're getting into, like, relationships. There's, like, a huge, like, it's hugely misleading and, like, a huge, like, it's basically definite emotional destruction for one or both parties and like that is obviously a negative effect on women um oh my god rachel fs says i was i was threatened and pressured to sleep with gay men to quote unquote validate myself if i wanted to be with a woman i was told to be with a tim i had the same thing i um so me me and this other tiff friend of mine we both made grinders at the same time when I was 16 and she was 15, I think. And like our queer friends, many of whom were adults, like real adults, not like 20, like in their 30s, were like, yeah, you should definitely hook up with them and whatever, whatever. Because like that exact thing to kind of like prove that you're gay. But it's like we were fucking children. We shouldn't be hooking up with anybody. Okay. Hannah says, Dear Lord, is all trans basically about phallic worship? Yes, it is entirely phallocentric. Michelle's like, yep, we are so divorced from our own bodies and what we really feel, Benji. I've talked to this one woman I used to be friends with. I'm not friends with her anymore. Who was, like, quite prolific sexually. And 
a lesbian. And she said so many women she slept with, like, when she asked them, they were like, they don't even orgasm by themselves most of the time. So she literally was like, there are some women who, like, in order to orgasm, they need to, like, put in their ear, like, earbuds and, like, listen to music and, like, zone out or something because they, like, they cannot, while consciously being, like, aware and, like, connected to their body and stuff. Like, they can't, like, that they, like, I, I don't know. I don't even know. But I was like, that is so sad. Isn't that really sad? And, like, again, it's like, imagine a man telling you, oh, yeah, I orgasm, like, three times a year. You know, that's fine. What the fuck? That's not okay. <laughs> Why is that so normalized? That shouldn't be normalized. Um... Um, <laughs> cyber is like you're being Sheila Jeffries. You're turning the les the straights into lesbians. <laughs> okay, um, let's keep going here. Trying to move along faster. Oh, very interesting. Aquarina says, also artists note beautiful hands, lols. It's an artist thing. Sculptors sculpt them in marble. It's a total thing. So awkward. I did hear a terrific Women's Liberation Radio News interview with Becky and Nancy about intention, intentional women's communities. Oh, very interesting. True, VF says headfems head can have the four no community, but they are not lesbian feminists. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, it's like Michelle was saying. It's almost like saying that straight women aren't good enough if they need to like be lesbians to be like legit or whatever. And it's like, why can't women exercise their agency without it being about the object of their sexual desire, right? Like, why can't you just say, oh, yeah, I'm attracted to men, but no, I will not do XYZ with men. Instead of saying, oh yeah, it's because I'm attracted to women. Like, why can't you own up to who you're attracted to and exercise your agency at the same time? That's, right? I don't know. <laughs> Komotashio Benji. <laughs> What you just discussed about the difference between sleeping with a hetero woman or a political lesbian sounds like a great question to explore at your uni at Benji University. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alcamaria says, I never knew that there were women-only communities. Mind blown. They have art studios and dances and pottery and they put on shows and everyone is sane and men and boys only get the pool from 1 to 12. Yeah. Yeah, I know that there's women's communities. Not that many in Canada, but um, I would love to go. I know that there's a couple that you can go, like, for a week. And you can either pay or you can, like, sign up to do, like, a certain amount of labor. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. Dragon, don't start talking to me about how the winter in Canada is so warm. It literally fucking rained yesterday. In February. In February, it rained. What is that? Yeah. Kira says, off topic, but have you heard about China censoring out Ross from um, Friends? Ross's lesbian ex-wife storyline? No, but I'm not surprised. Um. <laughs> Uta's back. She's like, I'm back for the sex talk. Uh, <laughs> done hauling trees. Welcome back, Uta. Hello, and uh, Ella. Um, Lisa, check your signal app. Oh, fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, Michelle, that's kind of what I was trying to say, but you've you've put it um much more concisely michelle michelle uh, lisa michelle says why are heads so uncomfortable with just renouncing heterosexuality why do they feel the need to be political lesbians yeah it's like 
you, why can't you can say no to something without saying like okay to me it's kind of like um female socialization in a way or symbolic of it at least that instead of somebody offering like you know do you want x a woman needs to make an excuse why she doesn't want x oh it's because i want y right instead of just saying no i don't want x no justification no rationalization no defense necessary just no anyway um yep hannah says i'm straight not a political lesbian but i'm horrified by the politics of sex mm -hmm. jesus says i guess i just i had assumed Political lesbians were by women who just decided to exclusively date women only. There are some women who use political... There's like a, country, a couple of different groups who use the term political lesbian for different reasons. And I think that's one of them. But I think recently that that's caught on as um, a female exclusive bisexual radical feminist. So in that way, they're like exercising their agency without denying who they're attracted to. Um, and thereby being a great example for other bisexual women that you can exercise your agency in this way. And they're not appropriating lesbianism. Lisa Michelle says, oh, I mean, it even goes with people being like, oh, I'm too busy to have a relationship and making excuses like that and stuff. Like, just because, like, just be comfortable saying, I don't want this. I don't need to justify it. Thank you. Exactly. Very, very poignant. Um, oh, gay is here. Did I already say that? Hello, gay. Um. Exactly, Lisa. Lisa says a lesbian as a sexuality, a head woman who doesn't want to date men isn't a lesbian. Yeah. Um, this kind of ties back to Erin Terrell's Twitter thread. Um, in that thread, she and many other GCs, well, I mean, I guess you can be gender critical and still be like wildly lesbophobic. So but a bunch of other um, people in that thread were all saying, and it's like, I get what the basis for this is. Taking it out of context doesn't make any sense. They were all saying it's to do with, like, libido. That, like, if women have low libido, they're lesbian. And when they get really high libido, then they go start having sex with men. And it's, like, the very particular experience of being on such a high dose of tea that you're out of your fucking mind with arousal all the time, right? That has nothing to fucking do with anything else. That is, like, one specific circumstance for, like, a specific group of people. Um, and it's literally old-school homophobia. Who was here? Who was here when we read this? What is in this book? This book is like, oh, yeah, where did we see lesbianism? In the harems. Why? Because the men weren't there. The poor women. They were all horny and there was no men, so they had to make do. Like, half of this fucking book, that's what the men conceptualize of lesbianism is. It's like... Oh, there was no men around, so you were masturbating, and then you masturbated with your friend. Like, oh, so funny. Ha ha ha. Like, that's what lesbianism has been throughout most of history. Like, do you have a low sex drive? Or you don't really want to have real sex? Or you need to make do because there's not men around? Like, this whole, like, libido. It's just like, what the fuck? Are the whole thing is, like, this is so fucking bizarre. Anyway. It's, like, really old school homophobia. V, if I have a sky high sex drive, yeah, I have talked to other lesbians with high sex drives. Like it's so stupid. Um, oh, sexual orientation, yeah. Um, yeah. <sighs> Kiara says they're oversimplifying it exactly. Um, <laughs> Yogi says just friends masturbating together like friends do no literally like I swear this book has five chapters I swear in at least six chapters there is an example of like two nuns two school girls two school teachers whatever being like oh they just like sleep in the same bed and like it's they were just masturbating like it's okay and it's like I don't know. 
Lisa says, so much of this is because everything in the world is framed around male sexuality, period. Yeah. Like, when you say that you think a woman having a low libido equals female homosexuality, what you're saying is that if there is no penis involved, that's what the lesbianism is. And it's like, or there's no, like, it's just, I don't know. Uh, in Turkmenistan... They imprison gay men, but they don't believe in lesbian. They call it, quote-unquote, women being friends. Do you speak Turkmenistani? What do they speak in Turkmenistan? Kazakh? I don't know. How do you know this? Do you speak their language? Do you have family there or something? Or do you live there? Ocarina's like bookshot. <laughs> so nerdy. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, what you're describing in Turkmenistan is like pretty consistent throughout human history to do with lesbians. If lesbians were convicted of a crime, it was always something um, like bizarre. Like, uh, like impersonating a husband or something. Or like, um, you know, like fraudulently getting something because you need to be a man to get that or something like that gay says most tiffs aren't lesbians in my opinion okay i agree and i disagree i agree that most tiffs are not lesbians but i think most lesbians are now tiffs you see what i'm saying that most of the lesbians under the age of 25 now have some kind of a trans identity but the tiff category is so huge that even most of the lesbians being in it under 25 doesn't over there's still more other random women in it who are not rachel rachel says so i want to say that while i was on a ridiculously high dose of tea it did make sex with men feel less painful which i associated with good the thing is it's way more about the manipulation of lesbians yeah vf said much more concisely what i was trying to say lesbians are a minority among any group of women thank you um uh yeah that's weird that it made it less painful though rachel you don't need to go into it anymore if you don't want to but just because like i understand that you're more aroused so i guess that was why but just with like you know all the the detrans women i've talked to about like atrophy and dryness and all this kind of stuff um i thought like in general it was my understanding the penetration became more pa painful after being on tea um okay i'm gonna go to the washroom i have been streaming for like well, before this, I read the essay. So I've been streaming for like almost three hours now. I need to go to the washroom and have a snack, but I will be right back. Well, I'm going to have a snack here. I'll be back in a second is what I'm saying. Okay, one second.
Hello. Mama. 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 Okay. Okay, Rachel replied to my very invasive questions about sex on tea. Um, Rachel said, to be frank, it numbed my clitoris and the atrophy deadened the nerves inside. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, sister. I mean, I guess that would result in less pain. I didn't even think of it that way. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Gay says before RGD, the RGD from it on, most TIFs were probably lesbians. Yeah. Um. I keep <laughs> Michelle's talking about stealing the chairs. Okay, so both of these chairs are actually Momo's and I don't have any chairs. This is the situation. I acquired Momo when I lived in Manitoba. This chair I ordered from IKEA for $50 when I lived in my got my first apartment when I moved out of the res. And as you can see, maybe not. Here, it's all chewed up. You see? Why is that? Because this is Momo's chair. Like, since the day I got her, like, this chair used to be in my living room. Like, in my living room, I had, like, a, I had, like, a two-bedroom, well, like, a two-room place. And my living room was, like, the bigger room. That's where I had, like, my desk and my couch and stuff. And this is where she slept. So, for, like, the first two months after I got her, I slept on the couch. Because I would, like, put this next to the couch and, like, sleep with her on it. And in, anyway, so that's her chair. And then... I moved to Toronto with my dad, and this is my desk chair from Toronto. And then I don't really know, but like, then I moved here. I actually liked this chair, obviously. This chair was not around, it was like in storage. Then we moved here. We had both chairs um, because I used to have like another whatever. There was more space for things to be happening before. And then I like went, okay, this is the situation. I don't know what happened. I would left this like in front against my screen door, like the screen was closed. But the glass wasn't closed. I left in the summer to visit my family for a few weeks. My roommates were feeding my cat. I came back. This chair has some kind of like a splotchy spot in the middle. I don't know what it is. But I hypothesize that whatever it is has a smell that Momo likes. Because since that happened, she is obsessed with this chair. Um, I think the only reason she didn't switch from that chair to this chair is that she's comfortable right now. Um, anyway. Um, okay. Everybody's like, Momo. Dragon says, the effects of testosterone are weird for me in that I didn't get the massive voice drop, can't sing as high as I used to, but still sound like a woman. Oh, so you got, like, lesbian voice? <laughs> or more lesbian voice? Uh, everyone loves a moment. I know. If I ever, well, not if, when I start making buttons again, I'm definitely going to make a button with just her face on it. And then if you are, like, my fan, you can all just, like, wear a button with her face on it. <laughs> Cyber just says we talk to the cat now. Um, Happily retired says, but why do these former lesbian want lesbians want to be dominant guys or dominating guys? I think that it's like a power thing. It's like a safety thing. It's like if I have the power to dominate a man, 
I'm the most powerful situ person in this situation and any potential relationship situation, right? Um, which is, is an ironically female perspective to have because I'm sure if you were a man, you would think, oh, I've dominated a man. I'm, I'm a faggot, <laughs> right? Anyway, so I think that women view it as if I have the power to dominate this man, no man has the power to dominate me because I'm like the dominant one or something along these lines. Um, Oh, Rachel, you don't sound like a robot. Rachel says I sound like a robot lesbian. You do not sound like a robot. Uh, oh, bye, Uta. Oh, it's Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Um, is that a thing? Aqua, what does it mean? Aqua says, wait, did your cat spray the chair you're sitting on? Is no bueno, a lols. Okay, it doesn't smell like anything. At first, I thought that one of the cats peed on it, and like I smelled, it doesn't smell like anything. So I don't know what it means. Maybe she did spray it, though. I don't know. Oh, is Uta going again? Okay, bye, Uta. Um. Kara says, I love the lesbian voice. I also love the lesbian boys. voice. Aqua Marina says, I made a Rupert button. Exolantix cat. It says he slash then. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, oh, I said bye, Uta. And then I saw you saying bye, Uta. And then I said bye, Uta, myself. I think this is a sign that I'm too tired, perhaps. Howard Strauss says, some. Also, what is the Strauss? Is that like a reference to like Vog uh, Ricard Strauss? Or is it just random Straussness? Um... Some dom gay men pretend the only quote unquote bottoms are gay. Yeah, that's because they're internalized homophobic shit. And also, like, that is something that a lot of Tims try to like play off of. Like, when I was a teenager and I was being encouraged to hook up with like gay men, I was told point blank, "Oh, that's your actual name." Well, interesting. Um, you're related to the Waltz King. <laughs> uh. I was told, like, oh, are you worried that the guy is not going to be attracted to you? Um, well, go for, like, a top, a dom who's a top, because they don't really care what equipment you have. They just care about being, like, the top and, like, the dominating stuff. So, like, as long as they can, like, top you and dominate you, that's what matters to them more. And it's like... Okay. So is this guy bisexual or is he so sexually fucked up? Like so porn sick, but like whatever the BDSM real life equivalent of that is. That like the act of the domination, like his sexuality is more about the act of domination than it is about the actual person he's doing it with. Because that's fucked up shit, man. You ordered the men's what, Yogi? Okay, well, I gave you guys some purse. <sighs> Aqua is asking if I've had dinner. I have not had dinner. However, what I have is some chicken nuggets. <laughs> and like, okay, I got five chicken nuggets and I have two packages of sauce this big. How much sauce could you need? I mean, I'm not one to complain about too much sauce, but it's kind of funny. Um, no, so this is the situation. I have decided that I need to end the stream because... I woke up this morning and left my, well, this morning was like a, today for the first time in my life, um, I was de-icing my car, which I, I think I must clarify. I've only had my own car for like about two years. So I was de-icing my car 
which I have to tell you, at five in the morning in an apartment complex where it bounces off all the concrete, it's very, very loud. I feel like I was basically screaming at everybody to wake up at five in the morning. Anyway, so I was scraping the ice off my car and I with I didn't hurt my windshield wipers. Somehow, while getting the ice off the car, I just like lifted the wipers off of like the arm. And they were like frozen chunks of ice. Everything was ice. And I was like gonna be late for work, even though it takes like five minutes to get to work at five in the morning. Well, not it takes usually like 10 or 15 minutes to get to work at five in the morning. So I took the wipers and threw them into my car. And I threw the like snow brush in my car. I Literally, like, I turn out of my parking spot and I start, like, going out of the parking lot and, like, snow falls from the top of my car onto the onto my windshield and I have no wipers. I had to, like, stop the car and it was, like, minus 20 this morning. Which is, like, again, it's, like, I know it's, like, you dress for it and whatever, but it's, like, when you just rolled out of bed, it's pretty fucking cold. I had to, like, stop my car, get my snow brush, wipe the windshield again, and then start driving again. And for the rest of the more, the drive, my plan was to crank my defrost so much that any snow that landed on my windshield melted. This worked, except liquid is clear, but not that clear. Like, you still wipe windshield off your... You still wipe rain off your windshield. So then I was like, this is like a decent... Con it's more... Have more visibility than snow, but it's not... Gr anyway, that was my morning. And I showed up to work 10 minutes late, which I never fucking do. When I work the crack of dawn, I'm always, like, 10 minutes early. I didn't even have time to get my drive through breakfast as usual. Yeah, that was my morning. Sharon says, I'm 42 in the ribs. It's hard to find t-shirts big enough. Yeah, I'm... I think I'm a 40 in my ribs. I always wear double XL. I like everything very stretchy. These black shirts that you see me wearing all the time and got them at Costco, they're double XL. <laughs> uh, oh, you're talking about the women's definition shirts. Yeah. If I was going to spend money on that, I'd probably get a women or a men's double XL. Anyway, all of that shit to say. I left the house this morning at like 5 and started work at 5.30 and worked an 8-hour shift. And then I came home and started streaming and it is now like 6 p.m. I think one can conclude that perhaps I should rest and not live stream anymore. However, are you excited for my next reading? Okay, go right. Yes. But I have to like housekeeping before we wrap this shit up. First of all, Rachel, I am very touched that you showed up. Thank you very much for commenting and everything. Lisa, Gay, Uta, like all the women's, basically. I'm very flattered that you all showed up. Um, so, today we read essay three. Was the problem that has no name. Tomorrow we are reading... Um, In and Out of Harm's Way, Arrogance and Love. It is a 35-page essay. So, you know prepare yourself for that also it might not be the same women because what i have done i have done for two reasons i have done something today this stream was at 2 30 in my time zone tomorrow the stream is at 9 30 a.m in the time zone and the next day the stream is at noon why have i done this first of all because my work schedule this is like literally the only times i can stream second of all i'm trying to accommodate people in different time zones not people women because some women have told me that my most of my stuff is too late for them. Um, so I thought I would do some stuff earlier. And especially with the readings, it all ends up staying on my channel. So you can just, you know, do it after. So tomorrow I am starting with In and Out of Harm's Way, Arrogance and Love, the fourth essay. I will be starting the reading at 9.30 a.m., um, Lisa says not people, women, like, hee hee, yeah. No, it's because I automatically, like, de-gender things because I was brainwashed to do it by the trans cult. It's, like, the one thing I was brainwashed by the trans cult that I can't get rid of and it pisses me off so much. It's, like, if I'm implicit, like, explicitly speaking to women, why does my brain, like, course correct to be, like, don't, don't exclude the men's, All right. So, yeah, the, the reading starts more at 9.30 a.m. If you're just rolling out of bed, you could turn on YouTube and just listen to me reading. You don't have to interact because, you know, the reading, like, I just read it, ignore you guys. So it's, like, 
an hour at least, I think, for 35 pages. Um, and then, you know, I've scheduled the conversation for 10.30, but I mean, it'll just be whenever I'm done reading this. Uh, midnight in Norway, I'm exhausted. Oh, hey, Karen, by the way. <laughs> are you saying it's midnight in Norway now? You guys are six hours ahead of us? Oh, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, wait, is Norway in the same time zone as Serbia? Are you guys on top of each other? Six hours behind, behind. Whatever. Anyway, so this is happening tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. in the Eastern Standard Time. You know, check my YouTube channel for your time zone, whatever time that is. Um, yeah, so if you can't make it tomorrow morning, Sunday at noon, we're doing a soapbox. Um, and then hopefully next week, I will be like live streaming with some women that you may know and may like. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, Michelle's go eat Benji. Okay. Time for me to do my duty as a cat servant. Take care. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm really glad that you all, um, you set time zone. Let's go, guys. <laughs> Comitatio. <laughs> you must be so tired. Um, okay. I love how when I start to say goodbye, the number stays exactly the same. And, like, when I'm in the middle, like, on a roll or something, I'll, like, lose five women at once. Um, uh, I'm not promising you. Next week is not scheduled yet. Next week will be scheduled by the end of this weekend. But, yeah. Oh, Aqua Marina is sending me these like feminist newspapers from Alberta. I'm very excited to read them. Um, probably on the soapbox. Or if not the soapbox, something else on the channel. <sighs> okay. Kamutashi, why are you staying awake for three more hours? Um, yeah, okay. Good night, dragon. Um, okay. So I'll let you all go. As always, if you would like to communicate with me in any way for whatever reason, to just be like, hey, nice stream, or like, I like your cat or something, you can always email me. Oh, I love you too, gay. Um, okay. Okay, I'm going to actually, for reals, end the stream. Okay, Momo, come say goodbye. Yeah, so squishy. Say goodbye, Momo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Serbia and Norway are in. I need to look at a fucking map, man. I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Karen. I hope you have rain tomorrow too, toss stones. Uh, so you can hang out. But if not, then the next day, toss stones. Okay. <laughs> you know, you guys are at that point where you're like, we're going to leave so that you have to leave. Okay. I'm going. Okay. Okay. Good night, sister. See you tomorrow. Bye.